Nice. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Lit. Welcome back to another episode of My Life is Awesome. I have a very special guest today. He goes by the name of Valiant Brand. If y'all don't know him, you need to get to know him. And we're going to get into some serious alpha today. I want to talk to you guys about the community. And I want to let you guys know that I brought a special guest on who's actually a day one hexagon. He's been in crypto before Hex was ever created. He knows everything Richard Hart. He knows everything about this community. All the hexagon OGs know him. And he's been here since before we ever even got started. And I want to bring Valiant Brand on this channel for my first live stream so we can all connect and create an alpha mindset. I want We're going to drop some serious community alpha. And it's not just getting your mind right. It's getting your spirit in alignment with this whole project and everything that's going on, who our founder is, what we're all about in this crypto game. And I want to just create a path so everyone can understand where I'm coming from. And me and Bran are in full alignment with this whole vibe. We've talked extensively, and we really actually feel the same way about Pulse Chain launch. And I know that there's been a lot of ups and downs, but I wanted to bring Bran on because he's been in crypto six years, and he's been here before all this started, and everyone knows him, and I'm so proud to have you. Thank you so much for coming on here, Bran. How are you doing today? Hey, what's up, Lit? Doing great. And uh, and everyone in the chat, cheers as well. Uh, you know, once again, it, it's cool to have like a, the community that we have where they're very supportive. And once again, thankfully, with StreamYard, it's kind of got like a streamlined process uh, as far as the streaming. But uh, but yeah, man, happy to be on and, uh, you know, honored to be on for, for the first stream. And I'm really looking forward to that. You know, like you mentioned, uh, getting into the the community early and following Richard since early 2017, and you know the the patience is going to be, uh, you know, it's going to pay off once once the chains actually launch. It's you know it feels like a long time, uh, you know, until the launch actually happens. But it's going to be cool, man. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, and I think let let me just paint a picture, y'all, of this whole Pulse Chain launch, kind of the way your boy Lit sees it. I kind of feel like we set an event. We had the venue. We called all the fire roasted chickens. They had hit up all their friends. They got their nails done, their hair done. They got all their fine dresses, all their perfumes and their jewelry. And they're all looking fire. Now, all the boys are texting themselves. Oh, you're going to be there? What suit are you wearing? Everyone's all linked up. We got our VIP passes. We've all sacrificed. We got our golden tickets. We're waiting to get in. We hear two weeks away. We get all pumped. We spread the good word like crazy. And we get up to four days before the event. And all of a sudden, we have to change the code and the event's off. So a lot of people in this community, including myself, were bummed out. I'm not going to lie. I was super bummed. I thought Pulse <laughs> was going to launch a long time ago. But I want to get into the actual launch event, okay? This is why I have Ballet here. It's to drop some serious alpha on y'all. Because I realize there's a pattern with Pulse Chain launch and the delay and Hex and the launch of Hex. And I just want to go back in time with y'all because a lot of people feel jammed up that we haven't launched it. I've been getting comments, getting called a scammer, that I'm a scammer because I'm pumping Pulse Chain and it's going to be in a 10-year test net and it's not even legit. And they rugged us and I'm having a lot of nasty comments come at me and I kind of chuckle at them because I'm like, hey, I get it. But like, good things take time. So I want to just break it down. Bran, you were in this community before there ever was a community. So tell me, run everyone on my channel who, who's not a Hex OG, explain to them the ups and the downs and the cliffhangers where you're waiting and you're waiting and then all of a sudden it doesn't happen. Can you break down in your own words what was it like where Richard Hart hadn't launched Hex yet? Tell me what that time was like in relation so people can understand, hey, Pulse isn't happening. But then I want them to understand what you know about Hex being a Hexican OG. What was that time like, bro, before Hex ever launched? Yeah, it's it's a great question. Um, I will say it's it's a lot different to... I mean, it's very similar, but it's also a little bit different to what we have now because, you know, Hex didn't have a sacrifice. You know, you had the the Bitcoin free claim and then you had the adoption amplifier as well, where you could 
uh, you know, transform Ethereum into Hex within a smart contract. But to uh, to the question that you ask, I mean, I would say that it's it's similar in a lot of ways where, you know, the, the meme came out of it uh, when we're all waiting for such a long time patiently uh, for more weeks, you know, because, um, you know, the thing is that the crypto mentions with with software is that you know, computer, like uh, software in general is, is hard enough, but then you've got, you know, crypto software and it's even tougher, right? Because the the unknown unknowns. And so long story short, when it comes to uh, to Hex, I mean, I know that he had, what is it? So two security audits and, and one financial audit. And then Dev Kyle, uh, sometime towards the, the end of the process before the coin was about to launch, uh, maybe a few months before the coin was about to launch, had discovered kind of like a bug in the actual share rate itself. And so he uh, wrote some code to make sure that it actually did mimic the compounding interest um, where, where longer would, would you know, pay better and things like that over time. But when it comes to the Pulse chain, yeah, you know, a lot of people are, you know, anxious. We're anticipating, obviously, the, the launch of the coin to happen. And I know, uh, you know, once it does happen, like Richard talks about, like with these analogies of uh, a thousand flowers blooming, it's going to be very similar to that where, you know, we've been talking about it for about like a year and a half, um, at least some of the videos on my channel as well. And, uh, you know, it's going to be it's going to be super rewarding for all of us once it actually happens, you know. Absolutely. Not only is this going to be rewarding, y'all, this is going to lead to never work again money if y'all can focus. OK, I am a Richard Hart purist by nature. OK, so what that means is that in the world of crypto. There's over 13,000 projects that can pull your attention and divide your focus. And I try to remember something really simple. I take these 13,000 projects and I funnel them down to a few base layers. Like at the bottom of this funnel, only a little bit of fluid can get through at a time. And it really stops just getting drowned all at once. And what helps me not drown in this crypto game is understanding we are in the right project with the right foundation, the right people behind it, the right billionaire founder. And if you if you see the progression we've had as a community, it's just this layer upon layer. Like we're a layer cake. We keep adding these beautiful layers of perfection. And I just feel really confident being in this community because we have so much devotion. There's so much devotion from the top down. Richard Hart did not just say, Find a meme coin, maybe you'll get lucky. He said, you have to have discipline in this game. And Richard Hart's the first person who taught me about Bitcoin and holders and Ethereum and holders. And if you look at the, the God whale in our community, they still have their ETH bag. How do they still have it? It's because <laughs> they held on. So mm. this community is not a pump and dump whole try to get a moon runner and bail out this community is actually a long-term minded community and the reason that happened is because the very innovation richard hart added which is staking and he really made popular he really popularized staking and any hex og knows if you have staked hex you are crushing it and keep keeping liquid you're you just you're more susceptible to the ups and downs so in general we have a more long-term minded community. And I just want you to break down when you were waiting for Hex to launch. Tell me what that was like. How many times did you get told Hex was going to launch and then it didn't? What is that four more weeks meme? Can you explain the meme for people who are new here? Yeah, so, and I think it was around like the beginning of, of 2019 because so Hex launched December 2nd, 2019. Um, but it was about four more like, you know, once again, and, and this is where Richard with, with Pulse Chain, uh, once again, thought that maybe it would launch, uh, you know, in the middle of May. Obviously, today is uh, September 1st and it's not launched yet. Um, but, you know, he wants to kind of not necessarily give expectations, but he obviously wants the, the chain to be done or with Hex, he wanted it to be done just as much as the, you know, myself and the other people wanted it as well. You know, because I can only imagine how much, uh, you know, pressure and things like that kind of happens. But the thing is, is once again, if, if Hex had launched um, a little bit early and even uh, before Dev Kyle got on, then it could have been catastrophic, you know, because what <laughs> happened was uh, the shorter stakes would have been able to compound more than the longer stakes. Like the whole point of, of Hex staking is, 
you know, you're being incentivized through the inflation that, that happens each day, uh, like a piece of the pie. And so before Dev Kyle got on, it would have been that shorter stakes. Let's just say if you had like six month stakes, you could keep compounding those and keep doing six month stakes. And eventually it would, you know, do better than someone that had a Quattro Cinco. So definitely with the timing, I mean, you know, Richard talks about delayed gratification, whether it's, uh, you know, self-help or anything else kind of being at the at the root of the success. And a lot of people, whether whether they realized it or not or wanted to or not, are kind of, you know, forced in a way to to <laughs> delay their gratification with with Pulse Chain and Pulse X and things. And, you know, for me, uh, I mean, I, I listen to people like Big, Pal, uh, Big Pep, uh, a lot of people in this community. And, and obviously, you know, once again, we we want the chain to launch, but we've also seen other, uh, you know, networks, you know, layer ones um, in the crypto space. We've seen them kind of launch early, like Solana or some of these other cryptos. And then all of a sudden, you know, they they launched and then now they had downtime and then Ghost they're up chain. again and then downtime. So, yeah, that's the last thing that we want. And and honestly, you know, obviously the. The impatience kind of builds up and things like that, but it's not like people can do anything until the the chain launches. But you know, I will say in the meantime, what happens is you know there's like the saying that like a, a fool a fool and their money are soon parted or easily parted. You know, uh, what happens? You know, you ask about the beginning of Hex. For me, I, I was you know same thing. The the bear market had happened. Uh, I was kind of down and out from just the the cryptos that I was in going down. But I realized from what Richard was saying and from some of the other people that, hey, you know, that's the time where you can, you know, really scoop up those cheap coins, you know, because uh, Ethereum itself went to, I don't know, it was like 85 bucks, 90 bucks, you know, and even today with its dip, that's still significantly up. Uh, so, but what I was going to say is sometimes you'll have people that, that will prey on the impatient and, you know, they'll create a new coin. And all of a sudden, because you have a whole bunch of people that are anxious for the coin to launch, they might you know, come over to this coin uh, and and who knows, they might end up losing some value because they were kind of impatiently waiting for Pulse, Pulse Chain to launch and they just speculated over here. Exactly. Much love, Crypto King. Good to see you, bro. And look, I really appreciate how you have been here through this, this pre-hex launch because as we were talking in private, you were explaining how Hex was going to launch at this time, and then it stopped. And then Hex was going to launch at this time, and then it stopped. And then Hex was going to launch at this time, and it stopped. And this is where the meme four more weeks came from. Essentially, you're being told we're going to launch, and then it didn't. What I this I want to just spread this message to the whole community. I want all your channels to start spreading the good word that this is exactly what happened with Hex, and this is this does not mean that Pulse Chain is not going to launch. When Pulse Chain gets stopped, I want you to see the pattern. Richard Hart has a pattern, y'all. It's called Crypto Genius Mentality. He is timing the launch of this thing, all right? I'm calling it. I'm calling it right here, y'all. Richard Hart is timing the launch of Pulse Chain, all right? Your boy Lit is putting it right here on the live stream, okay? The reason I'm saying this is that I've gotten to know a lot of people in this community, a lot of whales, and I've even talked to Richard Hart himself. And I want y'all to just think about this, okay? Put yourself in Richard Hart's shoes, okay? As a power coach, I do this all the time. Put yourself in Richard Hart's shoes and imagine you kick up this much flare, all right? There's just flare just all around you. You are going from community to community. You're having channels launched after your product i'm one i'm first pulse chain channel how long have you been creating content for hex valiant how many years <sighs> um I'd, I'd have to go back i mean it was like early 2020 i think it was like maybe june of 2020 so discourse syndicate had had definitely launched and it wasn't until him uh, rg3 and hexo and things like that uh and once again crypto coffee that i was like Okay, let me actually do this because once again, operational security was always something that I considered before. But when I saw the community, it's like, you know, you got to jump in it because, you know, something kind of felt compelled. Exactly. And I see a comment that says Richard Hart is not timing the market. Guess what, y'all? He can't tell us that. He can't be like, oh, I'm timing the market, y'all. I want to break it down, though. All right. This is my humble opinion. I'm not a financial advisor and I don't want to be. All right. 
I'm not happy with 7% a year. I want insane gaining moon runners that create never work again money for this community. That's what I want. So when you understand Richard Hart has kicked up this much flair, he has put himself out there. He's on streams. He's in different communities. He's really seriously put his name on the line. He has been very clear that he's not in this for money. He already has money. He's already been retired a long time. He wants the glory, okay? And if you look at the hex chart, how many times have I heard Richard say, look at this hex chart in comparison to Bitcoin or different things? He is a chart guy, okay? You guys have to understand our founder. He knows charts better than most people in crypto, okay? And honestly, I want to lay this at the community's feet. Who knows more about crypto than Richard Hart? Seriously, if y'all can hit me in the comments, hit me in the live stream. Who knows more about crypto than Richard Hart? Or who is at the level? You know, I don't even think many people are at his level of understanding the entirety of the cryptocurrency market. And a lot of that has to do with charting and understanding projects, understanding code, understanding all of it. So when you have this level of consciousness that understands the alpha at such a high level, this is serious leadership quality in crypto. You have to understand, is that dude going to launch his product when he's, he knows, he already knows from charting, if you're launching Pulse Chain in a bear and everything's tanking, what do we know about most things? Is they ride together. If you follow Bitcoin, you'll see how many things follow it. If you hear Richard Hart, you see Bitcoin, you see the hex chart matching up, you see it outperforming Bitcoin. He loves that. Hit me in the comments. Tell me Richard Hart doesn't love it when Hex outperforms everything. So in my humble opinion, the reason we don't have a chain yet is because if it launched, we're going to have sideways trading. We're not going to have a full moon run. And I truly believe Richard Hart knows if the chain comes out at the right time, the chart is going to look amazing. And that's what I think he wants. Bran, tell me, all the times you've studied Richard Hart, all the integrity you've seen him have over all the years, all the times that he has explained his product and who he actually wants to be in the community of crypto, how could he not be waiting to publish Pulse Chain, hit the launch button, and have the best chart possible? I, I humbly believe, I think he's waiting to push the launch button when he knows it's going to moon run. Because then five and 10 years from now, he can say, look at Pulse Chain. Look at the Pulse Chain chart. And there it is in the data. I, I'm telling y'all, this, this there's no question in my mind we're going to have a really good time launch. What do you think? I mean, it's, it's definitely something a lot of people have, have mentioned, that same exact thing. That like, you know, Richard's just waiting for you know, the, the bottom or waiting for the Ethereum, you know, the merge for them to go from a proof of work to proof of stake, things like this. And I mean, wh whether he is or it he isn't, you know, once again, it's kind of just total, total speculation, but, but same thing with Hex when, because I didn't know if it was going to launch and say, you know, cause it launched in 2019, December 2nd, but I didn't know if it was going to happen at the beginning of 2020. So it's kind of similar with Pulse Chain where, uh, it's kind of funny too, because me and Crypto Stylist a long time ago, uh, she was talking like, "Hey, when do you think you know Pulse Chain's gonna launch?" And I was thinking like, "Oh yeah, it's gotta launch before PulseCon, right? In September." And then you know now it's already September first, and and you know hasn't launched yet. But but you know to your point too, where if if you're launching something, you you definitely would want it to be uh, towards the bottom, so so the chart you know, does look like it's going up and to the right instead of having, you know, more sell pressure or, you know, more negative externalities that kind of made it go down. So I, I agree with, you know, both of those things. And, and whether he is or he isn't, like, I feel like we're getting really close to the point where it, it's, it's not really going to matter once it's, you know, launched. But obviously, he's got to be thinking about, you know, how the market's going to be when Pulse Chain launches as well. You, you know, we have to remember, Richard Hart is teaching so many thousands of people crypto how many onboards in this community are no coiners so many there are so many onboards in this community who were not in crypto before hex and hex has a high learning curve 
So when you bring, when you start funneling all these people into crypto, you have to actually look at the founder. What are they all about? And Richard actually cares about us. Okay. I know some people don't believe that, or some people are stressed out with how he's acting, but deep down, I, do, I really am proud to be in this community. My integrity is here. I've done everything for my integrity since I started my channel to this day. I've always had integrity with y'all and I'm invested in these projects. And I truly believe we are in the best projects you can possibly possibly be in crypto. I really, even though they're, even though we're delayed, even though we got excited and then it didn't happen, even though we thought it was going to happen last year, I wouldn't want my money anywhere else. I want to be in this community. And the reason is we haven't even gotten started, y'all. Seriously, this is all pre-launch. And if you remember months and months and months ago on my channel, I was talking about this documentary. And I was saying that I think if this documentary is done right, or this series, whatever it's going to be, it can onboard more people than all of us combined. Because if you have a really successful document that gets picked up by Netflix or Disney or whatever streaming company out there, you're going to get in front of millions and millions of people. And if we can all pump it and it starts trending and it gets into top 10, it's going to blow like wildfire. So mm -hmm. none of this has happened yet, okay? Me and you talk about RG3. He made this incredible comment. He said that in the future, Hex conferences will be in stadiums. Think about that, y'all. Yeah. In the future, RG3, the captain straight up said, "In we're going to have these things in stadiums. There's so many people. And I can see that happening because when you funnel all these projects down and you realize we're in a long-term project with a founder who's already rich, most of crypto, correct me if I'm wrong, Valiat, why do people get into crypto in the first place? In my opinion, they get in to make money, yep. right? Yeah, 100%. Let's be real. People get into crypto to make money. So you have to look at stability. Yes, you can moon run in an altcoin or a meme coin and make money, but are you going to get out in time or are you going to miss miss the high and then tanks and now you don't even, now you just sitting there with all this regret? There's not a lot of stability in 90 plus percent of these projects. The, the, the community we're in, hit me in these comments. Do you feel stable here? Do you think we're just going to shoot up and down and be all unstable? Or do you think we're actually in a stable community that's long-term minded and going to be here five, 10 years from now? How do you feel about that's that, so Brand? Uh, I, I definitely agree. And, and uh, <clears throat> once again, Nerd Girls talked about this a lot where she had kind of said that uh, each each crypto themselves, you know, why are they so, why are they such fanatics, you know? And it's because obviously people work hard for the money that they're earning. And so, uh, like he mentions, uh, everything in, in, in the world is, is just goods and services. So anyways, when it comes to Richard Hart versus some of these other crypto founders that uh, in 2017, like I was into to Litecoin. So the, the founder of Litecoin is, uh, is Satoshi Light, uh, Charlie Lee. But then once again, when it comes to um, kind of just some of the, the leadership qualities when it like with Hex, you've got the, the OA with, with Pulse Chain and some of these other coins like PulseX, you've got a centralized ownership. But then when I look at Richard, I don't fear if, if he is one of those things or you know if he could uh, have a huge amount of sell pressure, I don't fear him being the founder that's going to do that because once again, uh, we've waited this long uh, throughout the whole time. And, and why would he, you know, uh, it's like cutting off your nose to spite your face. So when it comes to Richard, he obviously wants the the glory. He wants to be able to brag about Pulse Chain that, hey, it's got 100% uptime while some of these other cryptos don't. And uh, it's, it's really cool to see because once again, you're betting on that founder, whether it's uh, like back in the day with Steve Jobs and Apple or some of these other companies as well. And, and I think crypto is kind of similar so once again, I personally wouldn't be, and I and I don't, I don't have my money in any other uh, any other ecosystem because back in the day when I did, they just didn't have as good of gains as say Hex and the Richard Hart ecosystem. Exactly, and it's just it's really important for all y'all to understand. We can take our microscope and we can zoom in, and if we zoom in, yes, there's issues in the community. Stuff stuff comes up. There's little you know, factions shooting off and dividing. But if you zoom out 
this is what I want y'all to do. I want you to take your consciousness. I want you to zoom out a little bit. I want you to get a bird's eye view of our whole community and everything we're doing. I want you to understand, whoa, all the Hex OGs got their hopes up and then Hex didn't launch over and over and over again. But what happened when it actually launched? Okay. You have to understand the past to understand our now. If you are new to Pulse Chain, if you heard about it through the Pulse Chain sacrifice or through Pulse X and you're new here, I want you to understand to OG hexagons like Bran, there's no skin off his back. Me and Bran are not worried. Look at my face, y'all. I'm not worried at all. Not even a little bit, okay? Not even a little bit. I have talked to some people and said, ooh, look, this could be happening. This could be happening. And when you actually do what I just said and you take that bird's eye view and you, over, you look over everything from a bird's eye view, suddenly all the stress melts away and you get mm -hmm. left with this centered channel of energy in your system and you start feeling lit. You start flexing on this community. You start understanding, oh my God, when we launch, we are going to go nuclear. We are going to nuke the crypto market. Green candle off the page again and again. And if y'all don't know why, here's why, okay? People have been waiting for a long time for this chain. We're innovating new technologies. We're solving problems. We're changing the way crypto is looked at. We're onboarding new coiners all the time. We have the dandelion effect where one channel inspires another channel. And these two channels have a reach that never would have had anywhere near understanding how far it can go. When Richard started this, he didn't know there'd be this many channels talking about him like we are right now. But we're here. And I'm here to tell you, Brand, let me ask you, when you first started, how many channels were there producing content? So maybe like i mean definitely under 10 like it's probably like five because i know there's hexologists there was uh crypto coffee and i i think hoddle dog and, and maybe like a couple others but it, it was super it was super scarce and super sparse and and once again even with uh the merchandise you know um now it's super easy whether it's hexmerch.com or amazon you know you can get it uh from if you have an amazon prime you can get a shirt in like a couple of days but once again, that was something where you had to go to hex.com slash downloads and take the PNG file and manually make your own clothes back in the day. And now we've got, you know, multiple options, you know, in abundance of it. And, you know, to your point too, where at the beginning of Hex, uh, people tried to shut it down because Richard Hart's always spoken truth to power. And honestly, like the, a lot of the cryptocurrency community has done a really good job, I'll, I'll say, uh, gatekeeping Hex and, and Richard Hart in the community, right? But with Pulse Chain, the the way that it's taking the entire system state of Ethereum and it's doing the the world's largest airdrop, uh, that's not going to be something that people can ignore. And and once again, you've got the the twenty seven million dollars that was uh, donated to Sens, and and also back when we were sacrificing for Pulse X and Pulse Chain, the if if you were sacrificing say Hex, the value of Hex was a lot higher then. So you know, it's, you know, we got a lot of our points worth when we did the sacrifice, which, which was cool too, because maybe someone didn't sell and take profits. But once again, if you did the sacrifice then you got, you know, a tremendous amount uh, more value than you would if you, you know, sacked at the same rate today. Absolutely. So you guys have to understand, seriously, I want this to go to all the channels and all the community. I want this microscope view to stop. We need to stop taking the microscope into this community and stirring up stuff. We need to zoom out, get a bird's eye view, and drop the alpha to all the new onboards, all right? The new onboards need to see unification. You need to see 13,000 crypto projects happening and funnel it all down to Hex, Pulse Chain, and Pulse X. And when we all unify behind Richard Hart, new onboards get to actually see a unified front, one army marching in one direction. And I want to just lay this at your feet. Do you guys remember that movie Braveheart? Have y'all ever seen that movie? It's an awesome movie. Awesome. You have to go watch it if you haven't. I love that movie. But there's a character, William Wallace, okay? And he's a Scottish dude. And the English are taking over his country one town at a time. And it got pretty hectic, all right? They were doing some gnarly stuff. They, they granted this law called Prima Nocte, 
where they started taking the wife of a Scottish dude on the on the wedding day and they'd bang her and they'd end up like half English kid and a half Scottish kid. And what it was is that if we can't get the Scots out, we'll breed them out. It's an actual war tactic where you would put your seed and try to breed the other army out. Okay. So this was happening. And William Wallace stood up and was like, hell no, you're not taking my fire roasted. We're going to collab. We're going to join together. We're going to create a united front and we're going to fight you. And what happened is he formed an army and that army started having victories. How did he have victories, y'all? He got the Scottish people together working in one unified front, all running in one direction with their weapons sharp, attacking, screaming, crazy, flexed out, okay? Imagine if William Wallace would have got a big army and then the whole army started dividing themselves up and going in different directions because I want to go here and, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to start that and I'm going to go here. Just drink that in, y'all. What would have happened when the actual battle came and the two armies came together? William Wallace would have got crushed by the English, like they crushed so many people before him. But that's not what happened. William Wallace actually won him and the Scots freedom, okay? The way he did that is by inspiring an army and sticking together, keeping focused. He kept his eyes on the prize, which was their freedom. And this army didn't start going in a bunch of different directions. So I want to make it very clear to this community that we stand behind Richard Hart and the launch of this blockchain. And it's not a matter of if it's going to launch. It's a matter of when. But to understand my view, you have to understand the Hex OG staker mindset. You have to understand delayed gratification. You have to understand Hex was going to launch and it didn't. Hex was going to launch and then it didn't. You have to understand this is a pattern. Richard Hart knows what he's doing. If we haven't launched, there is a reason for it. It's not random. This blockchain will launch when the boss says it's time. And I, for one, have full confidence in Richard Hart's understanding and knowledge of crypto. Okay? I want to state that on the record. I want all y'all to understand. I have confidence that Richard Hart is intensely focused on his army going the right direction. And Bran, I want to lay this at your feet, bro. We have mm -hmm. had Hex, okay? Mm -hmm. And Hex in the past is different than Pulse Chain. And I want to create a distinction because I'm talking about an army. I'm talking about all of us sticking together and not darting our eyes all around to different projects and getting distracted. But I want to open up the discussion about the community and, and, and projects. And I want to just kind of make a distinction that when Hex was created, it was on Ethereum. And Hex mm -hmm. is a project hosted on the layer one ETH. So anyone who came into Hex and started talking about other projects was literally taking away from the power of Hex, okay? Let's, let's get that step one. Step mm -hmm. two, now Richard has upgraded his game and he's included more in his ecosystem and he has created Pulse Chain Blockchain. Pulse Chain Blockchain is a layer one. A layer one by its nature is different than Hex. So the mentality of, oh, we need to protect Hex on Ethereum, a lot of people, they still have that mentality. And I want to I want to talk about it. I want to open this up for discussion because I've been wrestling with it. Part of me, okay. when I came to the community, I feel intensely like protective. I'm like, mm -hmm. Hex only, Pulse only, Pulse X only, everything else is just noise. Like, get us out of here. And I want to talk about that. Because I want your opinion. When you create Hex, it has to be protected because it's just a project sitting on ETH. But when you have Pulse Chain, it's the layer one. It's like the highway mm -hmm. that the cars are going to go on. So by nature of creating a layer one, in essence, we're opening the door for many projects to come flooding on, which is like cars on a highway. It's like you open the on-ramp and now hundreds and thousands of cars are going to fill up this highway. So I want to talk to you about 
how do you see the difference in Hex being on Ethereum needing to protect it and Pulse Chain, the layer one, being its own highway where cars by nature are going to have to go on it? Yeah, so, I mean, at the end of the day, once again, I'm going to stick with a lot of the RH ecosystem because, once again, it, it's tried and true and, it, and it's proven. But that being said, like you mentioned, whether it's it's new coins with, with new narratives, right? And, and whether they're they're actually like truthful or kind of you know deceitful, um, you know a, a layer one is is way different than like you mentioned uh, you know hex with the smart contract. So and the other thing is too is hex can be locked and staked. And I and I know Maddie, you were just uh, on Maddie's stream the other day, so I'm not too sure with all of those features. But you know once again with uh, with people that had the sacrifice, they're like whenever Pulse Chain does launch, you know they're immediately going to have you know their full balance. And so a lot of times you're going to see people go into, you know, they're going to divest some of the, you know, some of their portion of their pulse chain bag into other products and, and other projects. And so that's totally fine too. But to your point, the, the ecosystem is, is way different. And, you know, once again, just because uh, there's projects and things like that on pulse chain doesn't mean that, you know, that uh, they're endorsed by Richard, you know, he can't really do anything to, you know, counteract that because once again, it's a it's a blockchain. So for me, I'm just gonna stick with what has worked for me already, uh, which is just to stay in the RH ecosystem. But but you're also gonna have a lot of other people, um, you know, creating projects, and and we want that as well because once again, you know, you want the network to have utility. You want people to actually be using it. You don't want a ghost chain, and that's obviously also why the system stays being copied over because it's gonna immediately incentivize people that got their free airdrop. Uh, to to play on the new network, and that's just going to help all of the pulsicans because once again, you know, it is a uh, you know, it's not inflationary; it's deflationary. Uh, even though it's going to have a huge supply, the more that people use it, you're going to have that uh, that burn rate. So, I really, I love chatting with you, bro. We're so in alignment on all this stuff, and it's just I want to just lay this out to the community that the way I personally feel as I feel very protective of keeping this army together focused in one direction. But I've recently had to completely like kind of let my guard down a little bit and go, okay, lit. we're in a layer one. We're going to have project after project come into this community and it's going to start getting a lot of attention from hexagons. And I wanted to just open this up to the community to let everyone know we're going to have to keep our eyes open because people are going to come. And if you look at the game theory of a lot of these projects, it's like straight Richard Hart game theory being adopted with sacrifices and all kinds of stuff. Just look at the game theory of tokens coming out and you can see the influence Richard Hart has had. I personally, I'm all, I'm all, I understand people want to make money and launch their own projects and that's awesome. But I just, I personally, I have to, I have to go back to that first sacrifice of Pulse Chain, which was 700 million, and Pulse X sacrifice, which was a billion. And I have to just think about it. All right, Lit, where do you want your money? Yes, there's chances the, these other projects moon run, but if you look at the whole of the crypto game, where else can you find $1.7 billion that were put pre-launch into a project? Have you ever heard of anything close to that, Brand? So I know in 2017 there was EOS, and I almost want to say that was like four billion dollars, something like that. But but once again, to your point, whether it's other people in crypto that have been around for as long as Richard, uh, the the only answer I can ha say to that is Jack Levin, you know, because he was actually in uh, Bitcoin before Richard was. Um, but but yeah, when it comes to that, I would say. Uh, you know, once again, we're we're in a pretty dang good opportunity, and and like you mentioned, you know, you can't control what other people do, and and that wouldn't be, uh, you know, a a, f a friendly network, right? If if other people are kind of you know disencouraged to you know play on the network or, or go into these other uh, projects and products, but once again, it doesn't mean that you know I'm going to be doing that per se. Yeah, and I I just I have love for all the people in this community, all the projects starting up. Your boy Lit has love for you. Do your thing. And at the end of the day, I was realizing Richard Hart is is a genius, okay? He is a genius with crypto. 
I'm all right. When you create a layer, let me just break down what I mean. When you mm -hmm. create a layer one, okay, what were you saying earlier? You don't want to launch a blockchain at the wrong time and have a ghost chain. And for any of you who don't know, a ghost chain is when you launch your, your layer one and it's like your highway, you build the highway, but no cars are using it. So there's just like, there's just crickets everywhere. That's not what we want. We want a bustling, busy, five-lane LA superhighway packed full of traffic. Why? The reason we want that is because we're in this pulse chain hex game, baby. We have sacrificed for pulse chain. We have pulse coin. Pulse coin is the native gas on the blockchain. Okay. It's the native coin on the blockchain. And if you look throughout history, okay. Talk to the smartest people in crypto. You're going to find if you can get into a native gas coin early before the chain launches or right when it launches, if you can get a big bag of that coin, you're going to crush it. Okay. Why? Because not only, not only is it the native coin, which is awesome to hold, what makes it awesome? What makes it awesome is by the game theory itself, people are forced to buy it. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is just facts, y'all. If how many do you guys remember when I first started my channel and I used to say ETH fees are vomitous? They make me want to vomit when I see these massive ETH fees. Okay. Why did I why did we all have to put up with it? Think about it. Why were we all complaining about ETH fees? Because there was no other choice. You had to buy ETH to get gas to make a transaction. You needed it, it was forced on you. So you now fast sure. forward, we haven't launched our chain yet, but we're going to launch, and we're talking about other projects on Pulse Chain, the layer one. So think about it. There's 60 or 70 projects currently. What happens when there's a thousand projects on Pulse Chain, and these, these projects are tweeting out to their people trying to get people to sacrifice, trying to get people in, trying to get people on the train of their project. Where is that project hosted? That project is hosted on Pulse Chain. What does every single transaction from every single project need to operate? It needs Pulse Coin, y'all. Pulse mm -hmm. Coin is going to moon run out of control. Green candle off the page. Not to mention 25% of every transaction is burned, meaning mm. we are just going to keep going higher. It's going to become more scarce and more valuable. Richard Hart even made a comment. What's going to happen if Pulse Coin becomes so expensive that the gas is killing us like ETH is right now? And he says, well, we can always start another chain. So yeah. he's already thinking. He already knows, y'all. Richard Hart knows Anyone who's really smart in this crypto game, they understand Pulse Coin is the nectar. All right, y'all? Mm -hmm. So I have had to understand. Oh, my God. Richard Hart is a genius. He's a genius. So true. He, he just has to sit back. And I've, I've seen him interviewed. And they're like, well, what do you think of this project? What do you think of that project? And this project's coming out. And he's like, hey, I'm behind my projects. I'll, they're going to come. They're, you just be smart. Don't get scammed. That's pretty much what he says. Be smart. Don't get scammed. And I saw this air of confidence about him. And I'm thinking, how's he still confident when all these other projects are coming and potentially vampiring mm -hmm. him or taking his energy? And I just realized he is so stoked. He's like, bring the projects on. If there's a thousand projects, every single project that is here is going to need his coin for gas. And there's the long-term play, y'all. Pulse chain is going to launch. You're going to need gas to make a transaction. You're forced. It's you're forced to buy Pulse coin. Okay. So even people who don't know about it, when they get their free airdrop, Brand, tell me what you think is going to happen when people get their airdrop and they have no idea what Pulse chain is, but all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, what's this free copy? What do you think is going to happen?" Well, I mean, you know, sure, you're going to have some people that take their duplicate and immediately sell, but then you're also going to have people saying, you know, I've heard about this Richard Hart guy. Uh, you know, I've heard a lot of the controversy between whether it's him and Hex or, 
or him speaking truth to power when it comes to Bitcoin. But then once again, just like the the, the thousand flowers blooming at once analogy, uh, you're going to have a, a totally new network, and it's it's you know beating uh, Ethereum 2.0 as far as the the proof of stake, as far as some of these other things. Uh, they're beating them to uh, the punch as far as Ethereum started off with proof of work, and, and now they're going to be changing into proof of stake. But once again. Pulsing doesn't have that problem because it's natively going to be proof of stake. And then the one thing that you had also mentioned as well is, uh, once again, it's not necessarily uh, you know timing the market, but it's time in the market. And so when you have someone like Godwill or you have any investor in general, most people that say bought the, the IPO stock of Google, most people you know already sold or say with their Bitcoin. Uh, you know, as far as Richard Hart, he he was getting Bitcoin uh, in 2011, you know, super cheap. Um, but then how many people aside from himself actually held on all the way until those massive Moonrunner gains? And so with the, the coin itself having that burn rate and being deflationary, you're right. There's going to be a lot of people because when you have something that's so fast like that and, and the transaction just takes like seconds for the block to go through and the transaction to complete, it's addicting. You know, once again, yes. when you go on to, to Bitcoin and you see how slow it is, it's like <laughs> this is it's like, you know, fiber versus uh, copper. You know, the speed uh, difference is absolutely insane. And, and once again, that's going to give us a, a competitive advantage because, you know, maybe BSC is similar. Uh, maybe Pulse Chain is similar to BSC in a, in a few different ways. But the thing that it doesn't have that we're going to have with the advantage is the, the whole system state. Uh, and like you mentioned, even people that had a little bit of Ethereum, you know, obviously the ratios are way different as far as the, the free airdrop, the Ethereum you're getting. If you have one Ethereum before the fork, then you're getting, you know, one Pulse Chain after. But even that one Pulse Chain is going to last a person who knows, maybe a thousand transactions or, or at least hundreds of transactions. So this is the genius of us being here early. If you're on this stream, you better pat yourself on the back, y'all. You are here early, okay? We haven't even launched. We haven't even had our first green candle, okay? And I want it to be known, all right? This is your boy lit right here. I'm calling it, all right? I'm getting bold. I am so confident in the launch of this blockchain because I'm doing the bird's eye view. I'm zooming out and I'm seeing the bigger perspective. And I'm realizing this sacrifice kicked up some serious dust. A lot of flair was generated and kicked out during this sacrifice phase. Then PulseX came and all the FOMO from people who wish they did more went hard and heavy into PulseX. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the most successful launches or sacrifices in the crypto history. Okay. It's never yeah. been done. So, Take that, turn it into a block, and put that block in the foundation. And now look forward. What's coming next? I want you guys to understand. There was a sentence during the sacrifice phase that says, you are putting this money and you expect nothing in return. Okay? Drink that in, y'all. I am from the Bay Area. Okay? The Bay Area, per capita, if you take a map, okay, and you do one mile radius, and then two miles, and then five miles, and then 10 miles, and then 20 miles. If you do a mile radius and you add finance, how much money was generated in this one mile? We have Facebook, we have Google, we have all the incredible corporations that are worldwide dominating, okay? They dominate the world right here from the Bay Area. In fact, the computer that we're talking on, the internet that we're talking on, Cisco is right here. If you guys don't know Cisco, they're one of the backbones mm -hmm. behind the internet. If you guys want to know why Bay Area was called Silicon Valley, it's because mm -hmm. the silicone computer chip was invented here. All right, y'all? This is one of the premier areas of innovation in the whole world. Now, the reason I'm explaining this to y'all is so you understand I'm from this area that's on the cutting edge all the time. Most new technologies are being pumped out of this area, and this is why you have these worldwide giants, okay? They're literally, they're so big, sometimes they have to get broken up by government because mm -hmm. they're just dominating the whole world yeah. with their technology. And you have to understand, if you go back to Silicon Valley in before 1990s, you have to really understand 
There was no computer industry. The Silicon Valley was created here and exploded in growth because of the silicon computer chip that's needed for every computer. And now look forward, there's the internet boom, okay? And from that, companies raised and then they fell. Companies blew up, some went bankrupt. There, there was like this weeding out process here. But what is the end result all these years later when you look back? You realize, whoa, there's some giants. There's some big mm. money here. And the, the bigger these companies get, the more money they make. So you really need to understand when I say per mile radius, we have these gigantic worldwide corporations that have so much money here. And I've talked to some people, okay? I've talked to some serious heavy hitters who have a lot of money and I've onboarded them, okay? I've onboarded their friends and I've asked them, are you going to get your company involved in this? Mm -hmm. And they said, no, no way, Lit. And I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on. Don't you care about your employees? We're in the Bay Area. We're like, we're the, we're on the forefront of innovation. How could you not get your company involved? And they said, do you see that sentence right there, bro? You yep, see that yep. sentence? I ain't touching it. There's no way any of my shareholders would be okay with this. And I can't do mm, that. Mm -hmm. However, once this blockchain launches and I can buy it on the open market, that's a different story. And I've asked them, oh, so you can't sacrifice because you're afraid of this clause that if you take the company's money, you, you can't take that big of a risk. And hit me in the stream right now. Did you take a risk with your sacrifice? You're damn right you did. We all took risk to sack yeah. for 10,000 to one, right? So I am so bullish on this blockchain because I understand that everyone in the community is one block in the foundation. The sacrifice is a block, okay? But what is coming is when this blockchain actually launches, you're going to have entire companies, some of them right here in the Bay Area that I know, are going to put stacks and stacks of cash into this blockchain because they want in early, but they could not sacrifice. Tell me mm -hmm. your thoughts on this, Balliot. I mean, I, I definitely agree with that. And and honestly, I hadn't really considered that until uh, it was like with Crypto7 maybe, I don't know, nine months ago, 10 months ago, that he was kind of saying the same thing too. Because uh, once again, he kind of comes from, you know, some of the more traditional spots. And and it really blew my mind because, uh, and I see uh, Dingo Wolf in the, it wasn't Dingo Wolf. Uh, it was actually you know, Crypto Dingo. BD. Um, so, so yeah, shout out to everyone in the chat. Pulse Lord, he also did like a $5 super sticker. So shout out to him as well. Um, but so Crypto BD says, yeah, brother, you're right, except I didn't sacrifice. And, and once again, you know, you have people that um, obviously made the sacrifice and people that didn't. And even the ones that didn't, like the, the chain itself hasn't even launched yet. So they're going to be able to get in on, on day one. I mean, imagine how many people uh, cause, cause once again, people always kind of like to, you know, the hindsight's 2020 where, Hey, if you didn't get into the sacrifice, well, well, no big deal. It's not like you can really do anything, uh, to, to change that. Right. But that doesn't mean that you can't get in at the very beginning. Right. Cause even with hex, uh, you've got people that did, uh, the free claim and then people with the AA, uh, I'm sure a lot of people would, you know, uh, sacrifice a lot of things even to get that, you know, first day, uh, first day rate of hex, you know? And so, like you mentioned, with a whole bunch of, of companies and and once again, uh, people, you know, Richard, he's very specific with his legal language where, you know, I've seen other things, whether it was Celsius or some of these other things that are clear securities, uh, you know, someone like Richard knows how to stand the test of time. And when you also mentioned uh, big companies like Alphabet, once again, we've got Jack Levin, who was like the 21st or 22nd, 23rd, whichever number it was, uh, employee with Google. And so he got... Yeah, yeah. And so he got like a postcard in the mail, which once again, so many different forms of marketing that work. But when you've got people like him that have been in since the early days of, of Google and Alphabet, it's like, it really goes to show you that it, this is kind of like the Amazon in the 90s or, you yes. know, really early on. And it took, you know, X amount of years for it to, to hockey stick and for the S curve to actually happen. But when it comes to the adoption rate of an S curve, like we're at the you know, the beginning uh, before any of the mainstream, before any of that stuff. Uh, so that's all just pure opportunity. Dude, 
my cheeks are almost hurting from smiling. <laughs> I just <laughs> obviously like I'm always lit as a power coach. I just see the world in a way that just fucking makes me smile, y'all. I just I really cool, love man. being alive. All right. I just lost my mom. It was super gnarly. But I got to this point where I realized, dude, she wants me to be lit. She loves it when I'm here talking to y'all. And I have so much love to give in this community. And I just, I'm beaming. I, my cheeks are almost hurting smiling because of what you just said, where you're like, yeah, we're like the Amazon before internet boom. And it's just mm -hmm. so beautiful to think of it like that. This blockchain is going to get hectic. We have no clue what it's about to do, okay? Where we're at right now is so, it's like the infantile state, okay? We're like this kid that hasn't even stood up yet. We're just crawling around on the ground going, I'll walk one day. One day I'm going to launch it. I'm going to send it and I'm going to start walking. We haven't even walked yet. And guess what, y'all? That little infant is not only going to start walking one day, but he's going to grow up into a teenager. He's going to start liking fire roasted. He's going to start working out. He's going to get strong. And I'm telling y'all, this blockchain is going to be like a little kid that grows up and gets bigger and bigger and pretty soon is an adult. And when that, mm -hmm. when that blockchain is like an adult, you're going to see ETH gas prices, okay? You're, I'm calling it. We're going to continue to raise the price of Pulse Coin until we have expensive gas. It's inevitable. There's burn rates. There's buy pressure. There's big companies getting in. There's the dandelion effect where one channel blows up and sends seeds out and someone else gets inspired and they start a channel. And they start touching and reaching more people. We are blowing up. This is li literally, if y'all miss the internet boom money, you have Pulse Chain. And I want to spread that to the community. So many people know about this blockchain. And we're still so small. We haven't even started walking. We haven't launched yet. But we're going to launch. I want y'all to remember the bird's eye view. See the bird's eye view. Recognize Hex was going to launch and it didn't. Hex was going to launch and it didn't. And it finally launched. Pulse Chain was going to launch and it didn't. Pulse Chain was going to launch and it didn't. Now we're in the state where it hasn't launched yet, but it's going to. It's the same founder. Yep. The same founder is behind it. There's $1.7 billion sacrificed in this ecosystem. Fran, where else oh, can you funny. even <laughs> go in the whole of the crypto game to even get close to that? There's, there's nowhere. So I want mm -hmm. you all to understand, you're in the right place. If you're in this Pulse Chain Hex game, you better pat yourself on the back, okay? But you just have to understand, it's going to take time to learn how to walk. It's going to take time. It takes nourishment. You got to grow. We got to build the code. We got to get the word out. But just like I told you all, in Silicon Valley, once that computer chip is built and those computers are talking to each other and the internet backbone's in, what happened? First, people thought the internet was for email. That's what people thought the internet was. It was like, oh, I can email this person. Then there was AOL. If any of y'all remember America Online, you could live chat with people. Yep. It was super fun. Then all of a sudden, people realize, whoa, the internet is way more. I can buy stuff. There's all I can start a website. I can start a business. And what happens is it just blows up. And now, you know, there's studies that show people have all these bills to pay. Mm -hmm. And what is the first bill that they pay when they have no money, they can't even afford their mortgage or their rent? There are stories in this study where people will pay their internet bill to, okay. to make that sure that sense. they have yeah. internet. Makes sense? Yeah. The internet has done things we never thought. This is how I see Pulse Chain. We are going to go nuclear in this blockchain. Mm -hmm. And it's right now, it's just this community. It's just the people who we've contacted so far. But when we, when we have mainnet, when big companies realize I want to get into this $1.7 billion sacrifice business and I can't with my company now, but I can day one or when there's a little dip, if there's a dip, you understand big heavy hitters are waiting for this opportunity. So any FUD out there, anyone trying to tell me Pulse Chain's a scam and I'm a scammer, anyone telling me anything about Richard Hart not launching... Just honestly, it, it just I'm gonna laugh. I just laugh it off and I get back 
to the bird's eye view of understanding this is where you want to be in this crypto game. Now, mm -hmm. Bran, when I share that with you, when you feel my intensity and my energy and I'm just smiling going, oh my God, it's like the internet rush only in crypto. How do you see Pulse Chain launching as the layer one with, we're in a bear, okay? How do you, how do you stay so calm as a hex OG when you're, when you realize, oh, we didn't launch? Like, how do you stay so calm and so chill throughout everything that's come up? I, I think part of it is because, uh, I mean, what other option do people have? Once again, people that didn't know about delayed gratification uh, before, before the sacrifices, you know, they know about it now because once again, they're, they're forced to, right? Because the chain itself hasn't even launched yet. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And, you know, the thing that I'm also looking forward to is Hex, Hex's claim to fame. And Richard was saying this long before, uh, you know, before the chain itself, or sorry, before the smart contract itself launched. But Hex did a 10,000 X in, uh, in under two and a half years. I think it was in actually in under two years. Uh, you know, imagine what happens when Pulse Chain does its first 10,000 X, uh, obviously from, from the all-time low. But the thing that I'm looking forward to is, you know, you mentioned never work again money. And, you know, there's a handful yeah. of, of Hexagon OGs that, you know, once again, whether it was luck or whether it was through persistence, you know, we're able to invest in early. But the thing that I'm looking forward to as well is there's a lot more people that have heard about Pulse Chain just to it being more popular. I'm looking forward to when they receive, uh, well, you know, when they experience their first 10,000 X, like how many more people's lives are going to be, you know, uh, much better and allow them to invent new things or, or, uh, you know, not be in a slave waging job where they're constantly stressing about the bills. I'm looking, looking forward to that. And, and also with Pulse X too, like, you know, some people, they hear that Bitcoin did 6.9 million X and it's like, oh, you know, that could never be done again, but it really could. And if there's anything that could do that, uh, it's something that, you know, Richard Hart had created and developed with specific game theory in mind. And uh, once again, man, I'm really looking forward to it. The, you know, it's, it's kind of like you say too, when, when it comes to perspective, because often you're going to have doubt whether it's in a bear market, like a, a whole market cycle, right? Some people will convince themselves that, you know, just because the price is down, that sometimes they can kind of get shaken out, you know? But then eventually, you know, once again, we go from a flat line in kind of the, the bear market itself back again to, to the bull market. And how many people are going to be there for the 10,000 X with, with Pulse Chain? Because once again, with Hex, you can stake it. Uh, a lot of us staked it, you know, for Quattro Cinco and things like that early on, because that's what Richard recommended. But when someone sees their first 10 X, 100 X in Pulse Chain, you know, are they going to sell it all and, and never come back? You know, some of those things also do exist. And and once again, I did a clip on my channel the other day, a funding gym talking about an investment thesis. You know, why are you actually getting into the token? Why did you sacrifice? And then, you know, once you've answered the why, you also should uh, answer some of the questions on like how and when are you going to take profit? You know, what's that actually look like? Because if you don't have that written down in, in clarity and in detail, then once that opportunity comes up, you you might not take the shot, you know? I not only do I know, absolutely. I've talked to I've talked to a couple of people who laid this very point at my feet. And I just I gave them some answers and they told me, that's why I like you. Let you have a hexagon OG mindset. And I didn't realize it, but I just want to share. I come from the stock market, okay? When you're picking a holding in the stock market, I learned from Bay Area badass brokers. These dudes, these dudes have accounts that'll make your head spin when you realize, oh my God, that's so many, that is so much money. And then you realize that's only one account. That's only yeah, one account. Are you kidding me? And like, that's only the account they can show me. And then I see two or three and they have like nine of these things. And not only that, they're managing accounts for other people. These are seriously high level brokers. Okay. And I've talked to these dudes and I said, what is the number one rule that you would tell someone brand new into the stock market? And the first thing they told me is only buy something you're willing to hold for five years. Okay. That's what they told me. And that's the very first thing they told me is if you're going to get into this stock market game, minimum holding five years, crypto is a little different. Okay. It's like the wild, wild west. 
you could be squid game one day and just have insane gaining moon runner and then boom fall off a cliff they pull the liquidity and they rug you okay crypto is a little different that can happen in the stock market and it does every day but i took that mindset i took that to mm -hmm. heart from these brokers because i went you're so rich you know you couldn't spend all this money in one lifetime you can't even spend all your money. You're going to die with millions of dollars in these multiple accounts just sitting there. You can't even spend it all in your lifetime. And you're telling me, don't buy a holding unless I can hold it for five years. So what I started doing is I started looking for innovations. I looked for patents and I would read the entire patent. I would read absolutely every detail that the patent covered. Then I would look at the leadership. Who owns it? Who's behind them? How did they get started? What was their past? Then I would look at what are they innovating? What is their business plan? What market are they going into? Then I would look at who knows about it now. And what you do is you put this little formula together where you can actually find these companies in the stock market that are pre-nuclear, like they haven't blown up yet. And if you can get in and you can hold that for five years, like they said, there's never work again money, okay? This is what happened to everyone who was able to get into these big companies like Facebook and Amazon and all kinds of places, okay? I get into crypto with this mindset of understanding these badass brokers who have so much money they can't spend it in one lifetime are telling me, don't pick a holding unless you can be there for five years. You starting to understand why I like Richard Hart? You guys get why mm -hmm. it was like a lock and a key? It was like I was meant to be kicking it with y'all hexagon OGs. I'm yep, not in yep. this crypto game to fly in and out. I'm here for the yeah. long haul. Isn't that exactly what you've learned from being in Hex? Yeah, it, it's exactly right. Once again, yeah. if if you're, because I actually got someone, uh, one of the roommates into Hex. And then, uh, you know, he he messaged me today and he said, hey, Bran, he, he was doing some sort of trading and he's like trading USDT, which is a stable coin. I'm like, why are you trading a stable coin? You know, so so I've got a little bit of education to to do with him as well. But but that's really cool because it's a it's a great mindset. And often a lot of people they uh, when it comes to uh, you know Warren Buffett they'll take the they'll take like ten different horses and, and bet on all of them as opposed to you know the the two or three or, or the few that could really you know make those outsized returns and those you know those moon running gains that you talk about and so once again it's also easier said than done because honestly when when Hex did its first hundred X uh, you know a lot of us were staked so once again when you're staked it's not like you're gonna emergency end stake and you know have a huge loss on your coins to realize a profit. And so what happens in, because obviously there's so much anticipation that's built up. And then like you mentioned, there's even more anticipation from the buy pressure on the sidelines that never got into the sacrifice. Uh, so it, it's also a good question to ask yourself, like, when are you going to take profit? I mean, at, at a 10x or 100x or some of these things, because once again, when you're actually uh, when you're actually going through it and you look at like the psychology of a market cycle, oftentimes people can be like so inundated from euphoria or from, you know, checking your, your staker app or things like that every five seconds that, uh, you know, you might miss the opportunity that, that maybe you were planning on to take earlier. But, but once again, like you said, uh, a five-year plan and kind of looking out that far, uh, I really like what Richard's made because how many people with Bitcoin, it's like Bitcoin itself isn't even 15 years old. And so we've got things like Hex where people are locking it longer than Bitcoin's ever been, you know, been around for. Uh, so that's a huge deal in itself is that the the community, as you mentioned, and, and with people like yourself and others, they kind of understand that, hey, this isn't something that once you get your first 10x that you want to just sell all of it and, and go look for the other you know, project. Like this is something that's going to be around for a long time. Uh, Richard cares so much about his glory and about, you know, making other people's lives successful, uh, you know, through them seeing some of the gains as well, that once again, it's just a matter of time, but it's also important to, to you know, to tell yourself and, and to envision, like, how do you think you're going to act when it actually happens? Because it can, you know, be a lot different if you don't have a plan written down on, on what you want to execute. I, I love that. We should all we should all write down a plan. And you know what? I am I'm all for this. I want to propose this to the community. Whatever you write in your plan, when am I going to sell Pulse Chain? Do me a favor. Before you write that date, ask yourself this question. 
what percentage of my bag am I going to sell when it hits this? Because I believe in these projects so much that I think you should keep a portion of your bag. I think you should separate and say, I'm not touching this for, for a while. I might give this to mm -hmm. my kids. You understand? I might pass this on. This might be my living trust. Okay. And you hold it. And then you take a portion of your bag and then answer that question and just understand, I'm going to just have a, what if, you know, the rainy day fund, keep a rainy day fund of pulse coin, because as this blockchain starts the burn, I, I did a whole video on the burn where one tree goes and another tree. And pretty soon this one national park is closed because of a fire. And I gave the analogy that it's like, you're trying to go visit national parks and you have this checklist and you're like, I want to see these eight national parks. And all of a sudden there's fires in three of them and you can only see five and that fire keeps burning. And now four of them are closed and you wanted to go see eight national parks, but you can only see four. Why? Because they are on fire and they've burnt down and there's emergency crews, there's firefighters, they're putting out these fires. And the point of this analogy is to understand this is what's happening in Pulse Coin. In Pulse X, there is a burn. And Pulse X, there's a buy and burn. All right. And Pulse X is, we haven't even talked about Pulse X. Let me just bring it up real quick. The way I see Pulse X is there's an automated bot that's going to be snatching up all the liquidity from the other exchanges. And I just want to break this down in lit terms so you guys can understand. This is like we're having a party on Friday night. Okay. And it's the Richard Hart party. It's the Pulse X party. Okay. You see the big X logo on the door. Some people don't know if it's a porn thing or if it's a crypto thing. They have no idea. <laughs> but we know. We know that's Pulse X decentralized exchange. And this party is going to be lit. Richard Hart is so smart. His game theory is so on point. You know what he did? He created a limo service. Okay. And that limo service knows. Ooh, there's this other party going on and this other party and this big, massive party with celebrities and tons of money and bling. And there's all these fire roasted chickens at these multiple parties. The Pulse X party has a whole taxi service of limousines that's going to go to those parties, pick up the fire roasted and bring them to the Pulse X party, baby. We are going to bring the liquidity all into our mm -hmm. centralized exchange. It's the same thing as getting a limo that goes to all these other parties and gets the hot chicks. And what's going to happen when you're at another party and all the hot chicks leave? Honest question, y'all. What are you going to do when it's a sausage fest? You're going to ask yourself, dude, where'd all the fire roasteds go? They went to the Pulse X party, y'all. You better get, out, get over here because it's on and popping. That's yeah. what's going to happen. Not only that. There's a burn. So it's going to start burning. And the way I want you to think of the Pulse X burn is now that all the fire roasted chicken is in the building at the Pulse X party, what happens? Are they there the whole night? Hell no. There's billionaires in this party. There's millionaires. There's badass hexagons spitting game at these fire roasteds. And what happens when you pull one or a trifecta? They leave the party. Now, there's this many chicks, pretty soon there's that many, and pretty soon there's that many, and pretty soon there's only a few chicks at the party, and if you are a single dude and you're looking for a fire roasted, how valuable are those few chicks left? They're way more valuable when there's thousands everywhere. So it becomes more and more sacred to be able to find one of these fire roasted at the party. And this is what Richard Hart did. He thought about it. He, he mapped it out. He masterminded this whole thing. He understood if I have a decentralized exchange, I want all the buying to be happening at my exchange. So the way he did that is set up a limo service to bring the party to him. Then he understood every, every piece that's getting bought up, I wanted to increase the power of this decentralized exchange. So he creates the burn. And this game theory is incredible. I'm telling y'all, this Pulse X is going to get out of control. And this is in addition to Pulse Chain. So this ecosystem, this ecosystem we're standing in, this is what has raised $1.7 billion. This is why I am so excited. 
This is why Hexican OGs like Valiant, who've been here since the very beginning, before there ever was a Hex, are so calm. You guys understand? We are so chill. The vibe here is so stable. When we talk privately, we're like, I'm like, hey, are you excited? Are you phased? Where are you at? And he's like, I could care less, dude. T tell us, how, <laughs> tell us how you, tell us what you tell me when I was like, hey, are you worried about the launch? Do you remember what you told me? <laughs> Um, I, I don't remember exactly, but but once again, worry is like an emotion that someone feels when when once again you're you're kind of you're kind of debating like okay is is this possible that this could do a ten thousand x just like uh, just like hex did and then uh, sometimes the skepticism can kind of build uh, the longer that people are waiting right if they haven't seen some of Richard Hart's other success but. But the reason myself and a lot of us other people are able to just stay calm is because I know that that if there was any problems with the chain, then Richard would he would fix those problems, and that's what he's been doing has been fixing those problems before the chain launches. And and honestly, what is another month or two or or three or however long it takes to launch when we've waited this long? And so some of these final changes that they're making which are going to make pulse chain uh, a much more superior network than some of these other things uh, that that can really make all the difference in the world when all of us are just waiting and instead of them making those changes once the you know the chain itself is actually launched they're making the changes now that's just going to make it exponentially better and so i'm really looking forward to that and then you also do have a few super chats in uh in, yeah, in just, the stream as well that people i was I was just going to say, we need to get to these, but talking to you, I'm like, we're going to hit the chat in a minute. All right. It's my first live stream. I'm learning the ropes here. I wanted you on board because you're one of my favorite hexagons in the whole game. All right. I just want to say that live. Dahlia Brand is one of my For favorite sure, hexagons in the whole game because he's always real. He's always chill. He's got super good vibes. And if you watch any of his streams, he's just here to help. That's it. Look at him. He's just here to help. He's just like me. We're just here to help y'all. We're just here to break this down and share this love and be in the good energy. So we're gonna hit these super chats, but I just want to I just want to say I am so excited about this pulse chain launch. Okay. I'm so excited because the timing, the state of the world, where everything is, I truly believe we have the ability to help our families and help ourselves and help our loved ones through these projects. I truly believe that. Bran, when you hear that and you see in my yeah. eyes, like my actual motivation is to power coach and help people find their power in a world that beats them down and tears them apart and tells them you're not good enough. And it puts these negative mindsets into them and they build neurosynaptic connections that don't help them feel good about themselves every day and they wake up firing these networks that beat them up i love taking a hammer and smashing them i love destroying mm -hmm. those networks in people's brains when i work with them and i love helping them see your life is awesome be proud of yourself flex on it you're not perfect and you don't have to be you just have to mm -hmm. be putting one foot in front of the other and improving yourself every day this project goes hand in hand with power coaching because I believe we're going to be able to bring the financial freedom that people need to be able to make the decisions that they need in their life to find their power and prosper. So mm. that being said, so much love to y'all. Let's hit this chat. Now, Bran, can you, can you post comments up or is that just me? So, so I can't, but I can. Okay. Uh, I can boom yeah, five MS. MS all, yeah. So much love, five bucks. Major love to y'all. Thank you for the super chat. You know I love to help, and I'm here to help y'all. And what else do we have? Say what? Oh, that's my boy. <laughs> I love this dude right here. We talk regularly. I got major love nice. for this dude. If you ever see him around, you tell him Lit says what up. Thank you so much for that. Yellowtail. Lit the man with the torch. Uh. <laughs> now, hit us up in the chat, all right? I'm going to get through some of these comments. 
and we are going to get through some of these chats. You want to start addressing some, Bran? Yeah, uh, let's see. Let me, because because I know there was another super chat, Crypto Artie, that says positivity will bring nothing but prosperous vibes. And and let you had mentioned something as well, where uh, you know not only when when is it when it's like never work again money, um, but then when also you can you can help your your loved ones as well. Because I mean, how many people would love to to help their family members or you know their parents and things like that, but obviously aren't in a position where they're able to. You know, so it's not like they they don't want to. It's just that they can't. But then with things like crypto being the highest appreciating asset class that anyone's ever seen in the world, when Richard talks about getting crypto right, can can literally like you can you can mess up on on everything else in in life. But if you can get crypto right, and and once again you find that moon runner that that's doing these insane gains, and you find the community that can help lift you up and and help uh, help you grow as well. Then for me, that's experienced it since the beginning of Hex and since following Richard, it's a tremendous feeling. And, and that's the thing that I look forward to because people say that, oh, there's there's no free money and some of these other things. And and as far as the Hexicans have gone that have, have been there since day one, I mean, you've received a lot of free money from these airdrops. And so that's the other cool thing is, is not only with some of the yield that we're going to be able to earn whether it's with PulseX staking or whether it's delegating to validators, uh, you're also going to be qualified for uh, future airdrops. I mean, how many people that see what Pulse Chain's doing with the system state, with the largest airdrop the world's ever seen, how many people are going to say, hey, you know, these people sacrifice and they waited, you know, a year and a half or however long we're going to, you know, we're going to reward these holders by sacrificing to this set because you see it with a lot of, uh, people that see the hex community, the the community is super powerful and strong, and so people are going to want to build on top of that as well. And oftentimes, people get you know free coins because they're trying to incentivize them. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. And you know, once again, uh, a lot of relationships end because of uh, financial struggle and things. And so imagine how much better uh, you know someone's relationship with their significant other is going to be, or some of their family members when they're not all you know bitching and complaining about how you know bad the economy is and how tough things are, but they can be celebrating, you know, good products and good inventions and good intentions and designs that are, you know, lifting their life up too. You know, uh, is that, let me ask you, bro, what is your favorite part of this ecosystem? I know that's like kind of a gnarly question because you, you love so much about it, but in your words, what is, and if it changes, that's all right. But right now, currently, What's your favorite thing about being in this ecosystem? I would just say, once again, it, it's the reason why people are in crypto in the first place, right? The the reason that people give a damn about Bitcoin is because they hear that someone got in super early and got those 6.9 million X. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, and, and once again, scams can pump and things like this. But when you've got something like Hex or Pulse Chain or Pulse X that are built well, that are designed for longevity, I'm looking forward to the people that have, you know, been working hard all their lives. Like once again, RG3 is a is a really good example of that where, you know, once again, he mentions he, you know, is a, a meal right and, and working a whole bunch of time. And, and now he's able to, you know, because he had sacrificed up at the beginning and also put his money into successful assets, um, you know, now he's able to see the fruit of the labor and and be able to reward from some of that. Look, look at the pinned comment, bro. You feel that? I feel the same way when I think <laughs> about you. I'm like, Brand Hammer's flexing on it, giving the good <laughs> word, yeah, spreading the good word. Another one, Hexican Greenhorn, y'all. Let me just shout you out live, bro. You are a channel OG spreading love to your boy Lit from the early days when no one was watching me. I'd see your comments and you would get me so excited. I don't know if you guys understand this, but I read every single comment I've ever had. And before mama got sick, I responded to every single one of you. Go look at all my videos. There's some com there's some streams that have like, like over 800 comments. And I didn't copy paste anything. I actually responded to all of y'all because I'm a power coach. And I understand each and every one of you matter. And I have so much love for you. And Hexican Greenhorn, you were there for me in the early days. And you just got to know, bro, I got so much love for you. And so many of these OGs. Tell That's me awesome. how you feel 
Bran, tell me how you feel about this chat right here because mm -hmm. I know we're in the same community. You see your people here. Do you see channel OGs of yours right here? Yeah, I mean, we got Finbear, Crypto Artie, Torin, Cape Fieger. Uh, he also did a super chat as well. Uh, $99 <laughs> says, I think, uh, I think both, <laughs> what's he say? I think you both a couple of wankers slash joke. Love you guys. Well, and that's the cool thing too. And we will, we'll want to get some mods in the future for, uh, for any spam bots. Um, but anyways, you know, it's really cool. Like you mentioned, I mean, uh, how cool is it for, for yourself to, to start up a stream and all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of people here. Uh, it's really that strongest, like you're only as strong as your weakest link, right? And Richard definitely understands that. And that's why, honestly, the Hex community became so strong because once again, it wasn't popular to be a Hexican in the beginning because, you know, you're almost kind of like the, the contrarian or the outsider because, uh, when people thought that with the free claim of Bitcoin, which all they were doing doing was just signing a statement, signing a transaction, uh, people thought that that Richard was going to steal their Bitcoin and that the the hex smart contract, which was audited, which doesn't have any admin keys, that that was going to take all their precious Bitcoin. And so once again, to be a hexagon wasn't really popular. And it's amazing to see now a lot of the like we're over a thousand days with 100 percent uptime. And I've seen so many different people, whether it's Gerardo, Wales only yourself. So many people come into the community. Doesn't matter what day that, you know, Crypto Compassion, Kate Vigor uh, that have, you know, blown up the community to uh, to where it's at today. And it's cool to see because honestly, I've always kind of just been like a lone wolf and, and kind of, you know, I have like a really close friendship and relationship with my brothers, but that was pretty much it, you know? And now with uh, the Hex community and, you know, Pulse Chain and Pulse X, uh, there's a now lot of people I can genuine. <laughs> yeah, Brand Hammer, you know, I can I can call a lot of these people my genuine friends, you know? And, and they've stood the test of time too, where I've seen a lot of people as well, not stand the test of time, you know, people that were, you know, uh, kind of like Two-Face where, you know, they seem to wanted to be your friend and, you know, six months later, they're not. But when you have people that are delaying gratification for such a long time or a community that they're not just trying to, to pump a dump, they're trying to get in for the long term, uh, you get like a different level and class of people that are just, you know, more genuine. You do, bro. And I gotta, I gotta just share with the community I was talking about say what in the chat earlier, and I'm talking here to Bran, and I want y'all to know, when I was going through the the valley of the shadow of darkness, okay, I kind of like, I had to step away from the community, and a lot of stuff happened, but what I realized is that the energy that I was bringing when I was recording videos, I would like play them back to put my mm -hmm. intro in and kind of like feel the vibe, and I could feel something was off. I knew mm -hmm. something was off and I realized, you know what? I, like this community deserves the best of me. And mm -hmm. I really, I had to take a step back and really get my head straight. And there was a couple times where I reached out. Did I just want to let everyone know Bran is the first person I reached out to in the community. I actually was like, yo, I just want to chat. You free? He hit me up immediately, and we well, we talked for like two or three hours. You remember that? Yep, yep. And we're yeah, just I chatting and yeah. talking. And I just I just want y'all to know, when Brand says, "Yeah, real life's one thing," and I had brothers that are really close, but like in this hexagon community, I've developed real friendships. This is legit. This is hundred percent truth. These friendships that we formed, they actually are real. So. If you guys start linking up with each other, one day I'm going to be at an event, all right? And we're going to all meet in person. And I'm going to be exactly the same in real life as I am right now because this is just who I am, all right? And we're all going to be bros. And I just want to send that message that when you are on my channel, when you're on Brand's channel, you're actually getting the real us. We're not here to be something we're not. This is actually who we are. And if we mm -hmm. become friends, we're going we're gonna to have the same vibe in person. And yeah. I just, there's not many places on the internet that you can go to actually get that kind of energy. In fact, I don't really know. Yeah. Do you know anywhere else to go that's like this community where you can actually make a friend and it's like you pass this IQ test and hex and you realize, whoa, this isn't a scam. This is the real deal. Pulse chain's coming. Pulse X is coming. I'm about to have never work again money. I just have to follow these smart brokers in the Bay Area that said five-year minimum and translate it into crypto, and I have to find the right project, and I found it. 
and I got in. And if you're not in, then stack your dry powder and get into Pulse Chain early. You will have insane gaining moon runners. When all these people come together with this mentality, I truly believe the friendships are real. Do, do you feel oh, yeah. me, Bran? Yeah. Yeah. Can you speak I, I, on that? Yeah. Some of the friendships? Well, totally. And and once again, uh, I, I think, uh, well, not that I think, but a lot of it stems from Richard, right? Uh, once again, you're only as strong as your as your weakest link. And, and when, when, when I think of Hex, like a lot of people can just think of it like, uh, a company where Richard's had a lot of successful businesses in the past and he never screwed people over. You know, my parents used to always say the same thing too, that uh, business goes both ways where if you screw someone over, well, now you're never going to be able to do business with them again in the future. And so Richard would always say, Hey, uh, you know, people need to have a win-win and, and give them a great deal as well. And so when it comes to the last name Hart, I mean, that's not his real last name. His last name is Schuler. But the reason that he chose that moniker is because, you know, he thought of himself as, hey, I've got a big heart. You know, I uh, want to do this for, you know, for the glory and, and genuinely help people. Whereas, and, and the reason it's so rare is because oftentimes in the world, you'll you'll have someone that is putting on a facade, they're painting a facade. And then when they get what they want, they, they you know, either rug pull or they show their true colors. But but the reason I like this a lot is, you know, Richard's been genuine and, and you know, down to earth since the beginning. And so if any of it was was fake or, you know, not genuine or not legitimate, it would have showed itself by now. And so part of the, the community relationships, you know, people that I talk with on the phone, whether it's yourself, whether it's a few other people, I can genuinely call them my friends. And I think part of that is from, you know, what stemmed from Richard and kind of the community that he kind of inspired to, you know, be a part of it and actually join. You know, I think you just hit the nail on the head, dude. I think you just hit a grand slam, bro. If Richard Hart did not have the mentality that he has of teaching all of us 6.9 million X in Bitcoin, 14,000 mm -hmm. X in ETH, wait to see what my blockchain does. I want to have the glory. I want to have the number one blockchain. Just drink that in, y'all. That's the message of our founder. The message from our founder is to understand delayed gratification. So when you come to this community, you better realize we're in it for the never work again money. We are not in it for the 10x or the 100x. We're in it for the whole moon run. And that has its own mentality. It's not like we're going to moon run and sell and just peace out. Okay. I'm still going to be involved. If I be, if I have never work again money from this, when I have never work again money, I'm still going to be here for y'all. We're building genuine friendships. And I think mm -hmm. that is exactly what you said. This comes from the top down. The leadership in a company creates the vibe. If the leader hires certain people, there's an energy. If the leader hires other people, there's a different energy. And our leader, okay, our leader actually as a founder has these principles that bring us all together and they give us a certain mindset and he has attracted certain people. And I just love how you put that. We are all here with a certain mindset. And what do you think, what do you think is, if you could sum up like, what was what what was the community like when you first got started and what's happening now do you see a difference in what it means to be a hexican can you can you touch on that well it's it, it's interesting right because there's not any like specific uh design set of rules that's like here's what makes you a hexican and things but but for me, the way that I've always seen it was just I mean, I've always been able to to relate very similarly uh, to Richard. And um, part of that comes from, you know, sovereignty and kind of like some of the cy cypherpunk movement of, of freedom and and self-custody that I really liked. Um, and then and then your question as far as that goes, I mean, uh, as, as time goes on, sometimes it, it can evolve. And, and that's where when you say people like myself or I look at uh, Motley and Tendies and and some of these other people that have been here since the very beginning and Hex, you know, we're still here doing streams and still trying to, to help educate people. And, and that's, that's cool as well. Cause once again, so is Richard where he doesn't have to be doing this. He mentions this a lot where the reason that he's doing it is because of glory. And eventually he is going to have built such a uh, well-designed turnkey, you know, vertically integrated system 
that's just self-sustaining and then he'll be able to you know direct some of his attention and in future funds to you know medical longevity that he talks about but the thing that i think is cool and and you know i'll say also that sometimes these terms are used just to like ask for credibility and for me um I don't like to necessarily do that. Like whether it's um, Pulse Chain and Pulse X, I hear a lot of people saying like, oh, we're going to be the OGs of, you know, Pulse Chain and Pulse X. And that's great. And, you know, don't like think less of, you know, yourself because if you didn't get into the very beginning of something, uh, you know, I think that there's a lot of people that come into the space. You know, there's going to be people that when Pulse Chain launches that a year down the road, they're going to have just discovered Pulse Chain. And the cool thing is, is, once again, the community itself, there's no, there's no like customer support line or phone number that <laughs> exactly. you can call and just say, Hey, here's what's going on. But in, in the Hex community and in Pulse Chain and Pulse X, there's so many people in the, like the Telegram audio chats and, and video chats. And there's so many people that are willing to help others because they know that they've been there at the very beginning too. And that's why I'm still here. I mean, you want to, you want to help pass the torch and also help other people not make the same mistakes that you did, you know, cause, cause like even on day one, I had sent some Ethereum to the contract address and it's like, okay, like let's not have people make that same mistake. And then also <laughs> I've learned from it to the point where like, for me, some of my most expensive mistakes, uh, like some of my biggest mistakes have been the most expensive, but that's okay because I've learned from them and, you know, won't repeat them ever again. You know, friend, I have to stop you. I never like stopping people when they talk, but I just want to stop y'all. Everyone in the chat and everyone who watches this on the replay, I want y'all to know, Power Coach, 20 years, helping people get real about life, helping people navigate through the dust and the darkness, all the bad synaptic connections they have in their brain. I smash on them. I help them rebuild new ones, and we live an awesome life together. And I have prerequisites to who I consider a friend, okay? I want to actually, I have a wall up. And I only want to let people through that wall who are healthy for my growth and development. And what I've learned in coaching is you can't let certain people in or they're just going to fill your head with nonsense and they're going to take you down. So mm -hmm. I have a wall and I have let Bran into that wall. I've let many of you hexagons in to my inner circle. If you've hit me in comments and I've read your comments and I've responded, that's me. You're in the wall and I'm hitting you back from my heart, okay? And I think the record speaks for itself in that. But I just wanted to stop Bran because he said something and I'm not sure if you guys caught it. He said, when I was first a Hex again, I sent some stuff to the contract address. You guys know what that means? That means he lost whatever he sent, gone. Now, that right there as a coach, when I have my wall and I'm like trying to keep bad people out and keep the good ones in, that right there, it just highlights why Bran Hammer is such a badass. <laughs> Bran literally is the man because he's here on a live stream sharing with y'all. I made a mistake. I lost money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that mistake, that mistake has motivated me to help you not make the same mistake. Bro, I just want to say, dude, I'm tipping my hat to you. That is one of the reasons why when I started tanking out and I was at my low, I wanted to talk to you. It's because I just realized, dude, this guy's so real and I appreciate you. And I hope everyone in who watches this video can understand me and you are homies and reach out, reach out to Bran, get to know him. He's an awesome dude. And he'll be real with you. And I just want to say, thanks, dude. Like, you just oh, you yeah, drop man. that little <laughs> sentence and I had to stop you and be like, you know what, y'all? That's why I like working with you. And you are a reflection of the type of people we have in this community, which is just another reason why I'm bullish. And I'm excited that my money is invested in this sacrifice with Richard Hart in this community. Because there's people like Bran here who are here from the beginning, big influencer in the community. A lot of OGs know you, like all the OGs know you. I don't, you know, if you're an OG, you know Bran. And <laughs> I think everyone here in the chat can confirm you've always been legit. I know we got Briz in here. We got Fagor. We got major love here. So much love to you guys. Mm. Well, and, and to your point, like, yeah, that's that's like the, the biggest test is, is because once again, someone can appear honest. They can appear legitimate, but 
But then sometimes like time is the ultimate truth engine. And that's why it's incredible that we've got an average of like between like six and seven years for, for hack staking. And, and when you mentioned the other, like the people in the community as well, yeah, I've, n- I've never been able to, cause, cause same thing, my circle's tight and, and my guard used to be down a little bit more and now my guard's more up and, and defensive in a good way. Uh, cause once again, you don't want to be, you know, too open-minded and all of a sudden have stuff that's flooded. But I think it's really amazing that like Tendies had mentioned this Wendy's for Tendies with, with him and Motley and Vince and stuff where, where the best thing that you can do uh, as far as like the RH ecosystem is participate in the community. Once again, you don't have to be a streamer. You don't have to uh, be docs and things like this. But the thing I will say is there's been so many uh, friendships and, and bonds, close bonds that have been developed that wouldn't have been developed uh, had those people not reached out to, uh, to each other. Like, like Joe Hexotic, you know, he was, you know, damn near suicidal and he had found out about Hex. He had found out about uh, Maddie. Maddie Allen as well, being like a, you know, health counselor and stuff. And so, you know, you never know who you're going to meet or how it's going to uh, impact or benefit your life. But uh, it's, yeah, it's something that I've had a lot of fun with as well. And then same thing too, going to uh, the meetups or some of the local meetups that I've done recently have been super cool. And once again, it just, it, it confirms the thought that I already have in my head that like, once again, I've never seen anything like this. And the, the community tends to keep proving itself. And, and same thing with Richard, you know, he's been here since the beginning and he's never, you know, he's never rug pulled. He's never uh, been dishonest or disingenuine. So that, uh, that kind of consistency over time is what's really rare. And, and yeah, I really like it. The consistency is here. If y'all are new and you're just tuning in, what we're basically getting into is the fact that Hex had delays before it launched. Pulse Chain is currently in a delay. And I want all y'all to take your microscopes and scoot them over to the other side of your table and float up like a bird and see the bigger picture. I want y'all to see the bird's eye view in these projects and realize this founder made sure Hex launched at an optimal time so he can show the chart and flex on it, all right? And I said earlier in the stream, I'm calling it, Richard is waiting to time this launch at an opportunistic moment, okay? He knows too much about crypto, he knows too much about charts, and he's in this for the glory. So whatever anyone says, oh, he says he didn't do that, of course he's not gonna say that, I'm saying that. I'm saying Richard Hart is too smart and he knows too much about crypto to not launch Pulse Chain at an opportune moment. Can anyone call the bottom? No, that's how it is in the stock market. You can't call the bottom, but you can launch it at an opportune moment. And that's what I think is going to happen. So I would just want anyone who's who just tuned in to understand the mindset. We are here. I'm here with, with Bally at Brand, been in Hex before it was ever Hex. He's here before the community ever started following Richard Hart. He's been in crypto six years. And he's one of the coolest cats with his attitude about these projects. And when I talk to him, we really line up. And that energy is calm. It's cool. It's collected. We kind of, we laugh when we talk, we joke because we're not stressed. And that's what I want to put into this community. I want to take away all the stress that any of you are having. Is this a rug? Are we always going to have a test net? Is main like in a launch? Dude, let all that go. Get real. We have a billionaire founder. Okay. He's not going to launch this chain at a time that he knows is going to hurt us because what is he going to have to do? Richard Hart has a big ego, okay? And I like that he has a big ego because he wants to crush it, okay? He wants to crush it. And the way he does that is by showing a chart on a screen. And if he puts up a chart of pulse chain and the thing tanks, that's, that's not that awesome but he is going to put up a chart where it crushes it and moon runs. So I brought Bran here because he firsthand can tell y'all, hey, I was here when Hex said it was going to launch and it didn't. And that's what we're dealing with right now in Pulse Chain. And I want to put the two together and help y'all see it's the same thing happening. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. This blockchain will launch. Cool your jets, calm down, open your eyes, keep focused, Remember that $1.7 billion was sacrificed for these projects and you are on the train, okay? You're on the train to insane gains. 
you're already mm -hmm. here. So all you have to do is get comfortable and start finding some people that you link up with in the community and become homies. All right. Yep. You just have to start making friends, spreading the love and watch as the dandelion effect takes over and we colonize mm -hmm. one area after another until we take over the whole of the crypto mm -hmm. game. Well, and, and that's to your point, that's that's exactly kind of how it was with Hex, where, you know, the meme is four more weeks and kind of towards the beginning of 2019, it's like, yeah, four more weeks. And then it was near the end of 2019, December 2nd, that obviously it launched. But but honestly, one of these days, uh, honestly, I don't think that we're going to get much of a forewarning. I know Richard kind of has gone <laughs> back and forth on things like that as far as is there going to be a measured block height that everything's going on. And I don't necessarily think it is, but but the thing that I'll say once, once, uh, you know, once again, uh, very lastly, is just uh, once again develop your plan because, you know, it could launch tomorrow, and all of a sudden you've got X amount of coins that you had sacrificed for times whatever rate, and then you're gonna. Sometimes the impatience can build up so much that all of a sudden you've got your say you've got a, a thousand coins. Well, you know, pe people that have delayed their gratification that long either they're going to be staking it or delegating it or things like that. But the last thing that you want to do is, you know, get rid of what you had waited for, sacrificed for, uh, get rid of that too early. Like that's where the hex staking had kind of saved a lot of us. But anyways, it's going to happen with hex, just like what happened, uh, you know, with Pulse Chain, where once again, it's just going to, you know, launch one day and, and then you're kind of going to be, uh, you know, needing to have a plan. Otherwise it's going to be like hectic. Absolutely. We got a question here. I'm going to put it up. Do you think Hex is still the better buy now that ETH 2.0 is set to launch in two weeks versus Pulse Chain, Pulse X? Okay, we're just going to talk about Richard Hart projects here. And I want you to give me your thoughts, but I just want y'all to know that ETH 2.0 is a completely different animal and it's not fixing the gas prices. Okay, so when ETH 2.0 launches, to my knowledge right now, from what I understand, is they're not actually fixing the gas prices. So let them launch, let them do their thing, let them kick off as much flare as they can. Pulse Chain has the transaction speed that is so fast. Okay, y'all? It's so fast, it crashed EtherScan. Okay? The testnet crashed it. And I talked to the devs and I'm like, hey, what's going on? And what they had to do is they had to set up their own scan website because the processes were coming through so fast, there was a gap in pulse chain transactions being processed and them actually showing up. So I want y'all to know we are going to have the better, faster network and our gas is going to be way cheaper. To my knowledge, that's how I understand E2.0. It's not fixing the gas price, which is the whole reason people want to migrate from ETH to pulse chain. One of the biggest reasons is that we're going to have this reset in gas price where how many transactions are we going to be able to do from one pulse? Okay. So I'm personally not worried. Even if ETH 2.0 comes out and helps a lot, I still think we are in the right place on the right train. And I'm not trading my ticket for nothing. I'm mm. not trading this ticket for nothing. You could put 50,000 shiny things in my face. All right. And I'm like, I'm going to give you all an analogy. This is a Zochen analogy for any of you who understand what Zochen is. It's an ancient Tibetan proverb that a lion, when you throw a stick, a lion will look at who threw the stick and just stare. And the stick goes flying and they just look. Oh, you just threw the stick. And a dog will chase the stick. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the analogy. Hexakins are the lions who don't run over and chase the stick. They look at, oh, you threw that. You get that analogy, y'all? I'm a lion, mm. and I'm sitting here watching who's throwing the sticks. So when these other networks pop up and these other blockchains and these other projects, I just intensely focused on the $1.7 billion sacrifice that has funneled 13,000 projects, in my mind, down to this Richard Hart ecosystem. I wouldn't trade this ticket for nothing. I'm flexing on my Pulse Chain ticket, y'all. So bring on ETH 2.0 and everything else. I'm happy to be here. What about you, Brand? Well, it's it's tough because once again, hindsight is always twenty twenty, and you're gonna have people that are like, you know, kind 
uh, and I don't know if it's where the question's leading, but we, we know for a fact that if you're if you're getting in before pulse chain and before the block height of that fork, that whatever you have on the Ethereum system state is going to be duplicated over as long as you've got your keys. And so no one really knows what the, what the ultimate trade is going to be, whether for me, here's the thing that I will say, like we know that Hex has been down about 95 percent, you know, a handful of times. One of them was big payday. And then it went on to go do like 120x from the big payday low. And so the thing that I would just say is it's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't, where you're never going to get that perfect execution. And if you do, it's not going to be every single time. But once again, if you know that Hex is down 95%, you know that because uh, with the E 2.0 stuff, you could have another copy because it might be contentious. But then what again, uh, what's the value going to be on, on the contentious side? Probably not very much, just like Ethereum Classic was. So the thing that we do know is, once again, you're going to get a duplicate of whatever you have. And, and for me, uh, yeah, I mean, put put a little bit into to each bag, right? If you've got some uh, capital on the sideline, then you know you just don't know when the chain's going to launch. But when it does, I mean, you're going to be on PulseX on day one and on Pulse Chain on day one. And you can't really ask for you know better than day one, right? So, <laughs> oh, I love this. So, let's just break this down. All right, it's a good question. It's a good question. Let me lay this at your feet, y'all. Okay, you have a thousand bucks. All right, we're in a crypto bear. Things are tanking all over. There's blood in the streets. You got a thousand dollars to invest. Where is the best opportunity? to start rolling over that money and rolling over means you you're xing it out 1000 becomes 2000 1000 becomes 5000 start rolling over those gains baby where do you want to be question if you have bitcoin okay around 20000 you have eth around 1500 okay and you have hex 95% down at like 4 cents 5 cents okay you have a thousand bucks where do you think that thousand dollars can roll over the most when we kick into a bull. Honest question. Hit me in the chat. Where's the best opportunity? Is it in Bitcoin to start rolling over your gains? Is it in Ethereum or is it in Hex? That's how I see. That's how I see the basics of this going down. Tell me what y'all think about that. It's a good question. And uh, Wendy's for Tendies, he talked about it the other day where, um, once again, sometimes bear markets can can be dreadful because because the, the bull markets feel so good because the value is going up. But, but the bear markets can be so dreadful sometimes because if someone's not adding more position to their cost basis, then it's like, oh, you know, here's another leg down, things like that. But, but I heard Wendy's for Tendies and, and Dixon Piper talk about it the other day where... Once again, Hex did a 10,000 X and it's designed to do, you know, the 6.9 million X that Bitcoin did. But if you had a hundred dollars back then on, on January 5th, you know, that could, that could be a million dollars at, at the all time high that we had had. And so one of the other things too, in, in a bear market is just kind of, you know, with, with your dry powder, whether you're adding dry powder, you don't want to be like completely throwing away money that could be, you know, future millions of dollars if you had invested that into something else. Yeah, exactly. And check this out. I'm curious. I I want to know what you think, Bran. I have my I have my thoughts. Crypto already much love, bro. Great question. How about the swap ratio? Are you contemplating a two to one from Pulse X to Pulse? All right. So if you talk to K for K, you're gonna get extremely bullish on Pulse X. If you talk to your boylet, you're gonna get extremely bullish on Pulse Chain. Okay. I love both of them, okay? It's kind of like looking at one fire roasted that you think is a 10 and another fire roasted that you think is a 10 <laughs> and saying, which one do you want more? It's kind of like, I don't know what mood are you in. <laughs> do you get it? They're both 10s, all right, y'all? So me personally, I love Pulse X. I love the limousine service picking up all the fire roasteds from the other parties and bringing them to our building. I love that. I love that there's a thousand chicks at this party and throughout the night when this burn kicks up, there's going to be pretty soon 500 and then 100. And then there's only going to be one chick left. I get it. It's incredible. However, 
if you look traditionally in the crypto game, just as simple as I can put it, a DEX coin, a native coin on a DEX versus a native gas token on a blockchain, traditionally the native coin on the blockchain will outperform in Xs, okay? Pulse X is new. Richard Hart is constantly innovating. So there's incredible innovation happening. I don't think anyone's ever done this with the DEX, what he's doing. So I can't actually say for sure, but I personally am the first Pulse Chain channel and I'm the Pulse Super Bowl. Much love to Discourse Syndicate. I got called out. Sammy Chica was like, oh, let's the Pulse Super Bowl. And I took it and I grabbed it and I held onto it and I wrapped it around me. And I love that. I am the Pulse Super Bowl. So you have to know I'm here to pump this Pulse Chain. I love Pulse Chain. I'm all about it. But like I said, you have two tens. It's you, you what mood are you in? You just gotta pick. You like blondes, brunettes, or redheads. What about you, Bran? I same thing. Honestly, uh, I'm completely content with what I've sacrificed. And I'm glad that I sacrificed as much as I did back then, obviously. Um, the thing that I'll say is is the same thing. I'm not making any swaps. Um, I probably will provide some liquidity. But as far as that goes, I'm not going to be swapping my Pulse for Pulse X or Pulse X for Pulse just because I'm happy with, with the bags that I have there. But as far as that goes, if someone didn't sacrifice for either, um, you know, hey, it doesn't hurt to just be into the, the ecosystem itself, the RH ecosystem. So what, whether that's like a, a different ratio for, for Pulse Chain to, to Pulse X, you know that just like with that Ethereum that the God will had, on, on day one, like that's that's super rare for people to be still holding such a big bag. So I would never do all of one thing or another just because I felt more bullish on it, you know? Um, I'm obviously bullish on Pulse Chain and, and Pulse X and Hex, but but uh, but yeah, as far as that goes, you only have so much finite capital. And and at least if I was getting into it, it would be in the, the RH ecosystem, you know? Um, but probably just, I'd probably do equivalent amounts. Like if I hadn't had any Hex, I'd probably do a third of that a third of Pulse and then a, a Pulse X once those two came out. You know, I got to ask you, dude, you've been in crypto over half a decade, okay? And in crypto terms, that's a long time, dude. Like yeah. the, the learning curve on crypto and the adoption, we're still so early, okay? Talk about mass adoption. We are so far away from mass adoption in Hex and Pulse Chain and Pulse. We're so far away, Okay. But if you look at crypto in a whole, crypto in general is hasn't been mass adopted yet. So you are here for years and years. You're almost over six years. Tell me about your buying history. When you got into crypto, did you start buying a ton of coins? What, what brought you to become a hardcore hexagon? Like, why do you hmm. believe in these projects so much? And what was your, were you buying tons of coins or were you, like, what was your decision process in, in this crypto game? So in the very beginning of 2017, it was Litecoin, Bitcoin, a little bit of Ethereum. And then and then the ICO run of everyone is creating, you know, the, the next Ethereum happened in, in 2017. So I'll be honest, I did kind of fall for a lot of ICOs. Um, someone had said, I think it was Davis earlier with the with the EOS ICO or some of these other things. Um, but But then when it came to... Because so I'd followed Richard Hart, which was like a crypto influencer, if you want to say that. But but there was also multiple other like crypto influencers that just aren't as benevolent as as Richard, you know, is. And so when I got wrecked following some other people, and once again, I was making those decisions, right? Uh, you know, you're the one that clicks the red button or the green button. But I'd kind of gotten wrecked in some some courses that once again was teaching you to trade, teaching you to do like technical analysis, and then. Richard had called the top of, of 2017 uh, at 20K. And I remember thinking, because once again, I was following Richard and stuff. And I remember thinking like, you know, it's almost like I knew that he was probably right, but I didn't want to accept it, you know? So I never actually saw that kind of just, kind of just held on, even though I highly valued his opinion. But then when it came to all the other cryptocurrencies, you know, you have alt altcoin season for a little bit. And then same thing, it went through a huge bear market too. Uh, I kind of just realized like, hey, Richard was the only person that wasn't trying to sell me a course, wasn't trying to uh, make any money off of me. He does like six to eight hour long live streams that are just him answering questions, you know, genuinely. 
and in helping people that, you know, because he's been wrecked in crypto before. He mentions uh, in Bitcoin, you know, buying the top. But then once again, even if, you know, he he did buy the top, which he did, if he if he continued to hold throughout that whole, you know, rest of those gains, and obviously he's he's up way more significantly. So tell me about this. You're in crypto. You're here six years ago. You find Richard Hart. I personally, like, you know, we've we've talked about this. We've kind of discussed the onboard situation and the timing of it. Whereas if you're onboarded at this time, you have this kind of energy. And if you're onboarded at this time, and if you're on, like, there's different times you get onboarded. When you got into these projects, I actually navigated towards those Richard Hart clips myself. I started finding the top hat Richard Hart where he's a little nerdy. Mm -hmm. And he's just answering these questions. There's one video where it's like a software developer. Should I become a software developer? Just one yep, question. Yep, yep. And he does like this two hour video and he gets into so much depth and it's literally like power coaching in action. He's just coaching with all his heart and sharing so much of his knowledge and everything he's been through trying to help people. And as a coach that warmed my heart, I started looking at this guy going, oh my God, you can feel his spirit. You can actually mm, feel yep, his energy. Yep, yep. And Richard has kind of like, he's doing this outrage marketing thing. And we've talked about it where, you know, he did this $27 million sacri uh, donation to the Sense Foundation. And he's publicly stated, hey, I didn't, no one even cared. So you have to understand in his mindset, he's doing all this good and putting so much good energy out there. And he's not getting back what he, what he was expecting to or wanting. So I think part of him is kind of like, you know what? I'm going to do some outrage marketing. Like if you guys don't want to see big donations to extend your life, let's throw some heavy flair out there. So I think we're seeing Richard in some different energies. And when you started, you got to see top hat Richard, correct? You got yeah, to see like yeah. full big heart. And as a coach, I love seeing that. So Everyone here now, you have to understand there's evolutions to our founder and, you know, life is up and down. There's ups and downs to the community. There's ups and downs in my life. There's ups and downs in your life. And our founder is on a path. He's not just always, you know, staying completely in this one area. And it's important to understand if you're new here and you're seeing Richard Hart doing this outlandish stuff or saying crazy stuff, you have to understand there's been an evolution and people like Brand have been there the whole time. Tell me what was what what carries you through to remain fully loyal to Richard Hart right now when you see him throwing a bunch of flair out and doing all this stuff. What mm. reminds you that he is the dude that you got to know back in the day? Like what what keeps you so motivated to be an awesome hexagon right now? I would say it's just his track record, right? Of of and once again, I mean, he was able to retire when he was like 24. You have to have a damn good track record, especially before crypto, to be doing such things, right? You had to have been doing something different than than the rest of the crowd for for Richard to have retired so early. Um, as far as it goes, I mean, once again, it's track record, right? Uh, a lot of people were were turned off uh, significantly with the origin address with some of these things that people claim that Richard is. But then, you know, there was always a goalpost that was being moved where the haters would say that big payday, you know, first they would say like Richard's a scammer that he's going to take your Bitcoin by doing the free claim, which they were wrong about. And then uh, let's see. So November 19th was the big day. Then they had said, you know, the big payday was going to be the, the pulling of the rug. And then all of a sudden, you know, the haters have been, you know, been nearly exhausted to, to death just because nothing uh, new has has been brought up. Right. Richard has he you know, he fought all the FUD and a lot of us hexagons fought uh, fought it with him, you know, like went through the, the growing pains of obviously, you know, being attacked. And and so once again, that kind of molded the community to be even tighter. But but he's been he's been consistent throughout time. Right. Once again. You know, you mentioned uh, that I was there for the top hat days, which I was. Um, but but that same person has, you know, he's always been the the same person. Whether it was him trying something different, like you mentioned with the outrage marketing, uh, I always kind of knew that. Hey, like obviously his, you know what his intentions are. Like his intentions, his intentions are that he wants to, 
you know, get as many eyeballs and, and people's attention onto what he's doing, because then it can save those people from, from being wrecked or from, you know, getting chopped up into something that, you know, maybe isn't as good of a fit. And so, yeah, Richard's been consistent since day one. And, and I've always admired that, that he's never, you know, I've never seen any, you know, disingenuine comments or things like that from him. So that's why I've been able to, to stay through the whole time. I mean, once again, funding Jim, Hexologist, RG3, a handful of these other people. Uh, we've, we've seen that since the beginning. And once again, he's never, he's never strayed from, from being consistent and in, in having integrity. Now, when you're a Hexican OG, essentially you've started at the bottom and you have Moonran. You have had insane gaining Moonrunner that just changed your whole life. How does that impact you now? When you see the stuff happening in the community, ups and downs, does that just is that just this massive foundation that just keeps you stable? So it's kind of like, dude, whatever's happening over there, like this dude mm. brought me to the promised land and he's about to do it again tenfold. He's about to bring us. Mm. I mean, what he did was hex. I feel like, I feel like if you're if you're digging a mine, okay, just imagine you're on a mountain and you're digging for gold. The first vein of gold was hex, and all these people who were there got gold, and now you have it. I think Richard has continued mining, and he's about to hit the mother load. I don't even think we've hit it yet. So you being here early and actually having real gains, how much does that help you to stay stable now? Because you're able to see like what has already happened, but there's new people here who have no money. I, I've onboarded people to hex at 40 cents, okay, and 50, and they've told me, Lit, what happened? I got mm -hmm. wrecked. And there's people who've gotten in at different points. So talk to those people right now and let them know because you've been here so long. What would you tell them? people who are worried about launch or worried about they're fudded out, they're all stressed. What would you tell them as a hexagon OG who's been here day one? Awesome. And, and by the way, I've got probably like just a, a few more minutes. Uh, no problem. Stream, we'll cut it so we're probably good. Um, but so, so what I would tell, cause someone asked me that same thing at Vegas in, in March where they said, Hey, you know, what do you say to the people that they got in it at the 56 cent high, right? That 10,000 X, things like that. Uh, and, and what I would say once again is just if you if you go to a uh, uniswap.hex.vision and you type in hex in the top left you know search bar and then you go to version one that shows you the beginning like that shows you the the whole thousand days uh, plus that hex has been around and and you see with uh, with big payday I know that that was also a huge uh, a huge ex expected event kind of buy the rumor sell the news type of deal where we had dropped like 90, it was almost as much as we've done now, <clears throat> where once again, it was about 95%, like 93%. And, uh, and obviously that's not fun to see, but just like with Bitcoin, where, where Richard had, had bought the top and then it went all the way down from like $30 to, to like 50 cents, something like that. Eventually it went on to, you know, make another market cycle. And so, uh, each time that you have like an all-time high and all-time low, you know, the, the definition of a, a bubble is obviously something that's kind of, you know, dwindling. But the difference between, you know, Hex and some of these tulip bubbles that people try and say is that the the tulip bubble from, from what Richard said, and to my knowledge too, you know, never got back up again as far as that goes. And with, with, with the Hex market cycles, we've seen it get back up again and, and do another one. And so anyways, you kind of just learn that, hey, obviously taking profit is important. Sometimes you can have greed kind of get the best of you where, you know, once again, towards uh, towards the high of hex, I mean, same thing myself and a whole bunch of other people are just screenshotting, you know, the balances and stuff. But then it's at times like this where, you know, once again, you can get those numbers um, in your in your actual portfolio to, to look a lot higher for that next bull run. And the opportunity that people have right now even though it's not fun to continue buying something that's going down, uh, eventually that opportunity is not going to be there anymore, and we're going to be in the bull market. And all of a sudden, people that you know had had bought hex at, at four cents, you know what happens when we go back to our previous all-time high? Uh, there's going to be you know kind of different steps to 
uh, to the path, like with, with Hex being designed to go to about 150 years, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs. And that volatility is the feature of Hex and is the feature of cryptocurrency. Because a lot of people can't handle the volatility. And once again, it can be st stomach wrenching, you know, gut wrenching. I mean, where you're like, oh, dude, down 90%, like the value was X, Y, Z. And now it's all the way down here. But if you, if you just stick with things like, like, things that have been around for such a consistent time, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, hacks, things like this, then eventually it's going to, to switch from the bear market to the bull market. And, and you're going to be really thanking yourself. Because once again, when I was buying like $90 Ethereum, people were saying, because that was the bear market, uh, people were saying that Ethereum was going to go back to $6 and to $3. And I just kind of had the thought in my head, like, because Ethereum had gone from like, I think that high was like $1,500. And then it went down to about $80, $90. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy some more right here because it could go to $6, but it could also not go to $6, you know? So it's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't. And once again, you're never going to get perfect order execution. But if you kind of just know that you're in assets that are, you know, winning at the in the long game, and that's all that really matters. The short term doesn't necessarily matter a whole bunch when, when you've got a, a plan for the future and, and kind of like that long-term road. Dude, thank you so much for that answer. This is just, we're going to have to wrap this stream up, y'all. It's been over two hours and I got to, we're going to wrap it up. But I just want anyone new listening, if you're new in this community, learn from these OGs who have real hearts like Bran, who are genuine, who will tell you straight, I did that. I messed up. I don't want you to mess up. So learn from me and do this. And if we can adapt this mindset, we're just going to start helping each other and helping each other, and then helping this dude, and then helping that fire roasted. And pretty soon we're this giant circle of people helping each other. And now we've become one unified army, all going in one direction. And what do we know happens with unification? We become stronger. So Bran right here mm -hmm. is dropping some serious alpha, and I want to reiterate it, all right? Bran Hammer is dropping the hammer, smashing out the alpha game right now. And what he is saying is if you're new, okay, and you bought at a point that's making you uncomfortable, you have to understand everyone who's been in Hex for a while has seen these dips. They've seen the chart get hammered. But with discipline and patience, not only has it recovered, it's reached new all-time highs. And he finished his point saying, if you can understand where we're at now, it's going to get way more hectic with the next bull run. And we have a comment right here from More Crypto. Much love, More Crypto. Thought Hex wouldn't hit four cent back in the day. If y'all remember, I had a video where I asked people in the community when Hex was mooning, I said, what if you could get one cent Hex? And everyone like was like, oh my God, are you kidding me? I would ape in. And guess what, y'all? We hit two cent Hex. Go look at the chart. We're only yep, at yep. five cents now. If you could go back to that time, I know you remember this time, Bran. I know all the all the dudes in the chat who've been here, you guys remember this time where Hex was crushing it and running, moon running. And what happened? Talking about one cent Hex was almost blasphemous. It was like, oh, yeah, right, dude. If I could go back to that time, I would take so much money and put it in. You got to remember, we're in opportunity land right now, okay? So we got to wrap it up. Much love. Appreciate you, brother Artie. Thank you. Dude, do you have anything to say to the chat before we go? I got so much love for this community. So much love for you, Bran. I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Tell Any closing thoughts? So so I'm looking at one of the, the last comments of, of Brian Sabato says, uh, do you think more people using their actual names like Bran and myself would help the community? Question mark. We're basically the only two going by our names. Well, I know Funding Jim as well. Uh, his name is Gary Woods. I didn't know that for the longest time. You know, once again, I'm not like so interested to know what, what people's last names are, you know. But anyways, you you develop more legitimacy and more certainty. Um, like, because the very beginning of Hex, there was three lawyers and Tone Vase, and then there's Richard Hart. And so they're, they're just going after him, attacking him. And and that's where the most opportunity was there. Because once again, there were so many people calling him a scammer. And you had to have discernment of like, 
okay, people are calling him a scammer, but he's not actually a scammer, you know? And then, so anyways, as far as Brian's question, I'll just answer it directly. Uh, for, for people that are on the sidelines that heard it was a scam, but also heard it was the best thing ever since sliced bread, uh, they have more legitimacy and more credibility when they're looking at the community from the outside, when they see Gary Woods, when they see that, hey, you know, you can go to Richard Hart on Wikitea and, uh, you know, it says, hey, his name is Richard Schuler, shows you the different, you know, um, you know, credibilities, I guess, that that he has. And so I would say that obviously adds to, you know, it makes the community stronger when when people don't see a whole bunch of avatars. And, and even for people that aren't using their names, uh, that aren't using avatars, I still see them, uh, you know, once again, they're, they're not bots. They're not looking like uh, bots with the same profile picture, even though they're showing not their real name, maybe they're showing their avatar, which once again, kind of, you know, gives credibility where, you know, once again, there's just a whole bunch of people that have been here for such a long time. I know also funding Jim, I think he's like a part of the uh, the the LinkedIn, which once again is kind of just building more legitimacy and credibility. But yeah, to answer that question, I mean, yeah, for me, I've always just gone by Ballyette brand because it was just easy to do. But I also understand people that from a you know name standpoint, from a comfortability standpoint, they don't want to put their names out there or or their faces out there, which is totally fine too, you know, because I was that way for the longest time. And the only reason that that I actually like capitulated was because for me, I was like, okay, I see something different in this community of people that have followed Richard Hart as long as I have. And, and there's something here that I want to be a part of. Um, so, so once again, I would say that it definitely adds to the credibility, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's no big deal if, if people, you know, don't want to do that as well. So it's, it's all up to their comfortability, you know? Absolutely. All right, y'all, me and Bran are just here to let you know, that whatever comes up in this pulse chain hex game, keep your composure. Keep your eyes on the prize, all right? Understand, we're building an army, and this army needs to stay focused. And when we have unity in the community, we are stronger, okay? So hear it from me directly. I'm going to tell you all directly. A layer one's like a highway. And we're going to have a lot of cars come onto this highway. And these are like these little layer twos. They're projects that are hosted on Pulse Chain. And you can get insane gains, all right? I'm going to be honest. If I were to get on here and say Pulse P-Hex is the only thing that's going to moon run, that's like insanity. Like that's like that. I'm not an idiot, okay? Don't be an idiot. Understand there are projects that are going to crush it. And maybe you can retire off of them. But I personally... And I feel the most stable. I feel the most comfortable onboarding people into Richard Hart projects because there's $1.7 billion sacrifice for these projects. There's a bunch of factors that all go into play. But I just want to let y'all know, keep your eyes open, be aware of all the projects coming on here, and just try to remember what brought us all together in the first place was Hex, Pulse Chain, and Pulse X. This is what formed the community, okay? And when there's unity in the community, we all win, okay? So I just want to state I have absolutely no problem seeing Richard Hart be the founder, be the man, get the glory. I want him to get the glory because if Richard Hart wins, all of y'all have never work again money, all right? That's it, y'all. So much love. If you have anything left to say, Brand, speak it now. If not, we will talk to you all soon. Yeah, the only thing I'll say is uh, congrats again on on successful live stream. Uh, same thing. Your uh, your channel was like the first one to, like you mentioned, be you know Paul Chain exclusive, and and same thing. Kind of even even though I've been here since the beginning, sometimes uh, it, it's just nice. It was it was that way with yourself, with Gerardo, and with Whales Only, where once again, you know, you say you know, getting lit and stuff like that it lights that fire again, where it's like, man, this, this, you know, this really is just the beginning and, and we're, you know, we're so early. Uh, so anyways, good job on the, the first stream. I was happy to be a part of it. And once again, man, onward and upward, you know? Absolutely, bro. So much love. I'm going to start live streaming more. I will have Bram back again. He is a personal friend. I care about him a lot. He's a good dude in this community. If y'all don't know him, Give me a plug. Tell my people where they can find you to get more content so they can 
get linked up with you? Yeah, so I'm pretty much just Ballet Brand everywhere. Uh, so B as in boy, A L L I E T B R A N, and uh, same thing. Yeah, pretty much Ballet Brand everywhere. And and you know, I try to stream about uh, every week on on Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, as as long as I don't have prior commitments, and as long as there's enough stuff to to cover that week to to make it be worth streaming. But you can pretty much find me uh, anywhere under Ballet Brand. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here. Much love, Brand. We'll talk to you soon. Until the next time, make sure to remember your life is awesome. So much love, y'all. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.